All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome once again to From the Tabletop, the TTRPG broadcast from the League of Extraordinarily OK Gamers. I'm the Wraith, I also known as Dan, your host and GM, and I'm so excited to be here uh, tuning in for another session of the Dawns of Voyage Holds. Uh, today, we have a very special session, um, the first of a very special session. Um, this has been kind of in the works for a while. Uh, we had to reschedule at least once, um, but we are doing um, a, uh, a session in, in the same world as the other games that we've been playing. Um, and, and this is a, a session specifically for uh, people who have never played tabletop RPGs before. So these, this is our, our newcomer session. Um, and, uh, among those newcomers, uh, today we're doing, uh, uh, half of, uh, part one of the, uh, the session, uh, with two of our players. And then we have another session, uh, tomorrow with our other two players. So today we have, uh, Dawsonian Gunner. Hey guys, Emily. And General Nasal. Greetings. My name is Colin. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that we're all here, uh, finally getting to do this. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, hopefully, things will go well. Um, great. So, um, uh, first thing I want to say. So, uh, since you guys are are, are new to this. Um, the first thing is anytime you have any questions at all, please ask. Um, we're, we're here. Ultimately we're here to, to have fun and have a good time with this. So, um, if there's, there's anything that's, that's getting in the way of that, that you're confused about or, or, um, any part of the process, whether it's game level or meta level, whatever that is, um, I want you both to feel more than free to, uh, to speak up and talk about those things. Um, will do. And on that subject, um, one of the things I do want to mention is if, if there's anything um, in, in the context of a table uh, of an RPG here, um, we, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff that we might end up covering. Um, you know, there's, there's violence, there's, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So if, if there's any point where um, uh, we're, we're sort of in a realm where you don't necessarily feel comfortable or, or safe or anything like that, um, definitely uh you feel free to speak up about that um we can sort of veer off of of topics or sort of do things quote unquote off screen um uh part of making sure that you guys are uh feeling safe and comfortable is is being respectful of that so um that's uh one of the things i just wanted to make sure is is said here um so um let's let me give a quick rundown here. So, um, let's start with uh, kind of your responsibilities, your job as uh, players here. Um, so, one of the big things um, in, uh, particularly in the system, so we're playing in a system called Blades in the Dark, um, and particularly in this system and, and, and other systems like it, um, they talk a lot about playing um, and always be mindful that we want to be uh, fiction first, right? So it's it's the kind of thing where um, uh, sometimes in, in a game like this, it's easy to get caught up in, in mechanics and thinking about like, oh, I want to be doing this thing that I'm reading in the book or, you know, something like that. Um, but the best usually the best way to go about any of this is to always be thinking about uh, what your, you know, what your character is feeling, what your character is doing, what they're, what's going on in the situation um, and trying to, uh, trying to portray that as, as sort of honestly and accurately as possible. Um, so, so establishing that for you for for yourself and for your character and then going from there and then figuring out how to put mechanics on top of of that um and so along with that i i would also encourage you to um to kind of think cinematically in a sense um often it's a good um a good way to approach thinking about what's going on in terms of like think of how it would be framed in a movie or or a tv show or something like that um 
and in terms of like what is what is my character doing in this situation and and what is the you know what is the camera concentrating on and what's what do we find is interesting um uh so that's that's usually i find a good um uh a good sort of framework to think about think about those things um so many other things uh particularly in 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 this game uh lots of things are going to go wrong uh there's going to be lots of failures <laughs> lots of complications <laughs> lots of consequences um and uh it's said this supposed to be fiction <laughs> personal life <laughs> got him um <laughs> So, um, I want to, I want to encourage you to, to lean into that stuff, uh, to one of the things they say in the book is to, to embrace the life of the scoundrel. Um, right. This, this it's, it's those things, it's the complications and the, the, the consequences and all that kind of stuff that make fiction interesting so often. And so, so don't be afraid to, to let your character take a hit, um, and, and things like that. Don't, um, uh, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yes, yeah, coming out of that, um, uh, be honest about what your character is doing. Um, and this is a thing that kind of connects to the mechanics a little bit. Um, in, uh, one of the things they say in, in the, in the book here is don't be a weasel <laughs> in terms of trying to say like, oh, well, my character is really good at this thing. And so I'm trying to sort of squirm what they're doing in this situation into that to sort of, you know, roll a better stat or whatever, like things like that. Um, but again, thinking about that fiction first attitude, um, mentality, uh, being honest about like, Oh, in this situation, my character is trying to do this. Maybe that thing that they're doing is a, is a stat role or whatever that I'm, that my character is not good at, but that's what they would be doing. Um, uh, so that's, that's, something that we want to be making sure we're being being honest about um as in terms of authors and and in the fiction um and one of the great um i don't know if it's uh this system or one of the other systems that sort of spawned off of it um but there was a line in one of the um uh the sort of player uh good player practices that said uh drive your character like a stolen car <laughs> Ooh, I like and I really, I really like that. Um, in terms of like, like sort of the culmination of all this kind of stuff, you don't, don't hold on too tightly to try feel like you're, you know, you have to, uh, win. win. Exactly. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't a game about winning. This is a game about telling a story, um, about, uh, seeing interesting things happen to characters. And oftentimes, um, uh, some of the most interesting things are things that go terribly wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, so don't uh, this this again this this game in particular is meant to uh, encourage you to do things that are risky, um, and so don't talk yourself out of a fun idea just because you think it might be too dangerous or whatever. The game is is kind of built around trying to help you do those things, um, which is not to say that it'll always work, but. <laughs> It's good. Colin, I'll take an arrow to the knee for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll yeah, let you. no problem. <laughs> um, so then, uh, to let you know what my job as a GM here, um, uh, I'm I'm here to uh, to kind of facilitate a a conversation. I think um, a good way to think about this is that what we're doing here is is kind of having a conversation. I mean, ideally, in a tabletop role playing game, you'd be sitting around a table. Um, but what? you know, <laughs> I know <laughs> mind blowing. Um, but it's to, to think of this as a conversation. It's, it's not, it's not me as a GM trying to sort of like dominate all of what's going on and telling you what you can and can't do. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts about your characters, about pieces of the world. I'm interested in being sort of co-authors with all of you, um, on this whole project. Um, so, Hopefully you got a little bit of a taste of that when we were doing some of the character creation um, and that kind of stuff. But those those are things that I'm I'm very interested in hearing your your thoughts and opinions and and trying to you know come to a consensus um, on on things like that. Um, I am also responsible for uh, bringing the world to life and conveying it honestly. Um, so. Uh, 
most of the time I'm the one responsible for explaining a situation, um, showing you what's going on around the characters, um, all sorts of things like that. Um, and when I say convey it honestly, um, that is, you know, just like I was talking about with you, with your characters, um, you want to portray your characters. Honestly, I want to portray the world honestly. So whether that means, um, uh, that I should be, you know, I, I should be making sure to to give you room to do things in a certain area or whether it means I should be not pulling punches because you're up against a really, you know, skilled something or other. Um, those those are all things that I want to uh, be making sure that I'm, I'm doing honestly. Um, again, all flowing out of of what's been established in the fiction. Um I also am going to try and help us cut to the action. This is a thing they talk a lot about in this book, um, where a lot of the uh, the less interesting parts and um, uh, more nitty gritty things um, are intended to be skipped over, basically, or glossed over, or sort of zoomed way out and say, "Oh yeah," and then sort of we do this thing, and then okay, now we're going to jump back in uh, where things start to get interesting. Um. So, uh, there may be times where I'm, I'm sort of pushing us through, like trying to plan out all the little details of something and just say, all right, let's, let's just go do it. Um, this, this system is, is very encouraged, uh, or, or encourages, encourages you a lot to, um, to act now and plan later. And there are actually specific mechanics in place to help you do that. Um, uh, I also want to be here to to be curious about your characters, about the world, about um, things going on in the fiction. Um, just like I said, it's I, I want to be here to be a, a co-author. Um, obviously, there's lots of stuff that I have um, sort of set out and planned out and um, all this sort of stuff, but um, I'm I'm here to uh, to kind of see how things go and to ask questions and to, um, to help pull things out. Um, and I'm also here to be a fan of the players. Um, ultimately, um, we're, we're here to, to tell this cool story and, and to see these characters against, uh, you know, try, uh, big odds and, and things to, to see them, um, succeed or, or, you know, to go down in flames maybe. Um, but whatever happens, um, I'm interested in seeing your characters do awesome things. Um, whether it is, you know, succeeding, uh, at great peril or, or going down in a blaze of glory. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, to sum up a lot of that, um, there's one, uh, one kind of mantra that, that pops up in a lot of these types of, of systems that I like. Um, and that is to play to find out what happens. Um, so, uh, and that's for, that's for all of us. That's for, for me as a GM, that means I'm not trying to steer you in any given direction. I'm not trying to sort of plan out meticulously the whole plot of what's going on here. My job is more to set out a sandbox, set out a playing field, sort of put some pieces in play and then let it go and see what happens. Um, see what your characters do, see what you guys do. Um, and, uh, and then to roll with that, not to sort of like say, try and force you into to things. Um, and, and then also for you as players to, um, to try and, and let those things, um, develop at, organically and, and, and as we've been saying, sort of honestly based on the fiction. Um, so, uh, it's not, it's not bad to have some, some ideas about, where you hope things will go. Um, but don't, don't necessarily hold on to that so tightly that it's, it's, um, detrimental to the places that could go. Um, and again, uh, ask all the questions. Um, if you, <laughs> if you ever need any clarification on anything, whether it's rules, whether it's fiction, whether it's, um, which antlers have races and which don't, <laughs> um, <laughs> please, Please Everything. feel free to ask. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's get into it. Let's steal something. 
Yeah, let's let's do the thing. <clears throat> all right. So you are a group of scoundrels who, from one path or another, have all ended up here in the city of Marshall's Cloak, a sprawling city built on the back of a mountain-sized creature named Tovoln, and have fallen in with a group called the Bohemians, a collective of underground artists and creatives who have turned to less-than-legal methods to fund their art and evade the oppressive and controlling authorities that control the city. Under the banner of the Bohemians, you have been recruited to form your own crew, a restoration unit, as the Bohemians call it, to help clandestinely encourage the flourishing of art and culture among the common people against the wishes of the authorities. Uh, so let's hear a little bit about your characters. Um, so I'll just go based on what's uh, who's listed in my roll 20 here. So let's, uh, Con, let's start with Isol. Right. Issel is a um, middle-aged pocket <laughs> thief. Uh, so I am a, a bequilled diminutive individual who is uh, rather adept at hiding in the shadows and breaking and entering. What a skill set. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Um, all right. Uh, Emily, let's hear about Chayla. Chayla, she is a young female human. Um, she also goes by the alias of the Raven. Uh, essentially, she is a bard. She used to be in a traveling troupe with her family of musicians and people having a good time. Uh, but since losing her family, she's basically made a name for herself in the uh, nobility circle as a as a bard. Fantastic. Um, one quick note here. Uh, because of the special crew ability that we took, um, everybody, Colin, I believe you already took your extra uh, action dot thing, right? Yeah, I took okay. a pip and prowl. Um, so, Emily, you can... Um, you, what is it? It's um, prowl, prowl, finesse, or tinker. Um, you get to throw one extra action dot into one of those three. In, oh, okay. I see. I see. Um, yeah, it's one of the crew Prowl abilities finesse. that we took. Prowl, finesse, or tinker. Um, I think I already chose one in finesse, so I'm just I can no more than two, right? Uh, for this, you can go up to three. Uh, okay. On the I'm, rules I, of this, so I'll just add a, a two to a finesse. Another finesse. All right. Do you do that? Yeah, All I'll right. do that. Yeah. Oh, look, it appeared. <laughs> that. Um, okay, so speaking of the crew, um, you are two of currently four members um, of a crew um, called Memories Rest, uh, W-R-E-S-T. Um, there's lots of <laughs> clever wordplay in that. <laughs> it's really good. Um, Very clever. Uh, so you are a crew of, uh, shadows by the lingo of this game, uh, which they say thieves, spies, and saboteurs. Um, your lair is, um, in an old unused cistern in a sort of a network of, of underground, like ruins and old aqueduct, aqueducts and stuff. Um, there's, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of extra information here, but, um, I think that's, Basically, your your reputation is that you are unconventional. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think that's that's uh, basically unless there's anything that I'm missing that's important to say about the crew. Good old unconventional crew. Unconventional. Um, so <laughs> the water we, priesthood really doesn't like us. The, <laughs> yes, the Enikat <laughs> Sanctuary is is not a fan. Um, they, were they at? They were at negative two, weren't they? Yep. Yeah, negative two. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you're looking at, I mean, I guess I'm giving away GM information here because I have uh, <laughs> on my screen uh, all here. all sorts of, of things plotted out here for sort of where certain factions are. But um, your crew lair, uh, your underground cistern here, is in the uh, the district called Prevailer's Gird. Um which sort of runs the length here. Um, and your your hunting grounds are up here in uh, a region called the Elskenweft. Um, 
So we can we can get into a little bit of what all that means when we get to it. Um, all right. So the Bohemians have given you your first mission as a new crew. Uh, the leader of the Bohemians, uh, a Pokken woman named Helbora, um, tells you of chatter about some kind of artifact as being presented at a huge gathering at the manor of the Nobes Artiga in the Elskenweft district for the annual Vigil of Flame. Uh, the Vigil of Flame is, is a annual... Uh, sort of first part of a holiday is the Vigil of Flame and the uh, Festival of Growth, I want to say, is what the other part of that <laughs> probably should have looked that up. Uh, yeah, Festival of Growth, great. Um, <laughs> um, so this would be something, uh, f unless you've been in Marshall's Cloak for less than a year, which I don't think is the case for either of you, right? Um is so. is something that you would be you would be familiar with um so yeah of course i know about the obviously the of, of, um, the, vi the vigil yes. of flame vigil vigil yes um i know about that so um yeah so there's there another name that you you mentioned so an artifact will be presented at oh at the manor of somebody at the manner of uh, a, a, a woman named nobes artiga nobes is a um a title uh so like lord lady uh master mistress uh those sorts of things what thing am i looking at here um no nobes is uh is a a title like that so nobes nobar is the is a male uh version of the title nobes is the female and nobem is a sort of plural or um uh non-gendered version uh right. so uh yes so nobes artiga has this manor um up in elskenweft um and uh that's that's where this artifact is supposedly going to be um presented so just to sort of paint this picture a little bit because that's what i'm supposed to do as a gm um so the bohemians have their their base down here in in Reshlinweft, uh which Reshlinweft is um let's see i'll pull this up so i can reference it um it's it's a, a a definitely a poorer neighborhood this is where a lot of the like uh uh what's blue co blue collar <laughs> that's the word right a lot of the the industrial workers um those sorts of things that's where a lot of these uh these folks live um and the area is dominated by uh, these sort of like stripes of, of sheer cliffs. Um, so it's it's next to impossible to like walk around a lot in this district. Um, there's lots of little um, little uh, flying boats, basically. Um, think of them as like little flying taxis or rickshaws or something um, that that people operate um, to to get around here. Um, it's, it's generally also the, uh, yeah, also one of the prime havens for underworld activity, um, and, uh, uh all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I think when you, you know, you would have been called into a, a briefing basically to sort of get all this information from, from Helbora. Um, Helbora is, as I said, a pocken, um, she is, uh, what do I have here? Late thirties, uh, light brown skin, uh, black quills that fade to a uh, white, peppered lightly with an earthy red. Um, so she's she's been the leader of the Bohemians here in Marshall's Cloak for for a uh, for a number of years, um, and you would know about her uh, that at one point she was she was captured she went in to go get some information she sort of like led this crew um in to go find out some information about um some of the stuff that the knights of the holy ground were doing um which would have been up uh up here in uh diadem um and got captured um and was eventually broken out but kind of was never the same after that um she yeah, she had clearly seen some things um, and emerged a different person. So she's 
um, she's, she has this reputation for being highly competent, um, but she, she very rarely talks, um, is generally very quiet and, and usually keeps, keeps to herself. Um, but has been, has been the trusted leader here, um, of the Bohemians, even, even in the aftermath of, of that, um, for, for quite some time. So, um, in, in the style of Bohemians that we've seen already, I'm imagining this kind of thing taking place in like the back of a, uh, some back booth at at like a tavern or something that they that they control um that their people you know they they love their art and their music so there's probably someone um uh someone like really good like playing some music um mizuki not, player not... in the background mizuki <laughs> play... <laughs> so this is an open mic night and you're yes definitely um and you're here to buy some cheese uh, <laughs> um and so yeah so sitting in the in the in this sort of back booth um and uh i think for for the purposes of this it's probably just the two of you i think the other two got a separate uh got a separate briefing for their for their part of this um so she's she's there. Uh, there's probably also like um, another maybe second in command type um, who's with her, um, and uh, um, as as all these um, other things are you know sort of low murmur around in the in the bar. It's this uh, sort of rough uh, kind of earthy place, um, but it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's a homey homey atmosphere to uh to a to a degree um and we're down in the Reshland and this would be down in, in Russian left correct um so she the information about this artifact um is concerningly scarce which uh, bohemians are are that's kind of one of their big things is is information that's one of the the primary things that they like to deal in um they they always like to be the people that know as much as possible about things that are going on. Um, and a lot of their people act as information brokers um, and things like that to to sell information to in interested parties. Um, so the fact that they don't know a lot about this um, is, is odd, um, or that they weren't able to find anything out about this. Um, but the this artifact is being moved um, from uh, Iron Mast Shipyard, uh, which is this this area here. If you can see me pinging on the map, I can. Um, uh, late, uh, it's being moved from Iron Mast uh, late uh, on the evening of the vigil, up to the Nobus's Manor um, in in Elskin Weft there. Um, uh, to be the centerpiece of a gal of a gallery to be presented during this big shindig um, at midnight, um, and uh, she kind of oh. yeah. Go ahead. So it's being moved the evening of the vigil to be a centerpiece at a gala the midnight of the vigil. Correct. Okay. So in transit, immediately on display. Yes. Okay. That is that is the information they have, um, and she and she also lets you know uh, that even just this, you know, just that amount of information um, was was incredibly difficult to to acquire. Um, so even just that they have this much information um, is uh, is a thing. Um, so half of half of memories rest. Your crew is being tasked with um, intercepting the artifact as it's being transported. Um, uh, this is the uh, the other half of the group. Um, that is going to be their job. Um, uh, another one of the uh, smaller uh, restoration units called Finale's Rest um, is being dispatched to help the other the other two members of of your crew um, to help with that. Um, but in order for that to happen, uh, you two are being tasked um, to. Uh, to the uh, to the Nobus's gathering, um, um, what? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, <laughs> to the Nobus's gathering, as the person hired to be in charge of the transportation, uh, Major Kirik of the Unsheathed, who Issel, you might notice <laughs> or note, is your uh, rival. rival. 
Um, so you have had some dealings with Major Kirik in the past. Um, and we can talk about some of that when we get to it. Um, uh, so Major Kirik is staying as a guest of honor in the manor um, and has been confirmed to be attending the early part of the gathering before leaving to oversee the transport. So, um, she then tells you that, uh, the parameters of your mission are to, uh, to infiltrate the gathering, to obtain the, uh, plans for the travel route from Major Kirik. Um, however you, however you are, see fit or able to do that, um, and then, uh, have, uh, extra sort of optional um, objectives um, if it's possible uh, to then subsequently detain or delay Major Kirik. That would help out your um, fellow crew members in um, in their uh, you know attempts to to intercept the transport um, as Major Kirik was supposed to be is supposed to be overseeing um, how that goes. Um, and then if you are also able to gain any further possible intel on the artifact itself, um, since, since they, since they know so little about it, um, that would be very helpful information. Um, and then finally, uh, you then are to get out and hand off the plans, um, the travel plans, um, and any further information uh, to a bohemian runner who is then going to get that information as quickly as possible to uh, to the other group so they can uh, make their move to try and intercept it. Okay. Um, so in that, in that regard, no big deal. No big deal. Easy. In that regard, um, time is going to be uh, a reasonably important thing to, to consider. So what, why, why do we care? about this artifact in particular? Uh, I mean, is it, is it just worth a lot of money? That's or? a, that's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, this, this score could, could be huge. Um, I mean, obviously if, uh, this is something that is part, part of why they're so interested in it, um, is because they don't know anything about it, which, which means that they're, that people are, uh, putting the hush on this. Uh, very, very uh, purposefully and very, you know, forcefully. <laughs> um, if the if the, the Bohemian, yeah, exactly. If the Bohemians don't know about it, um, that's going to mean that this thing is very important um, because people are trying to keep it secret and keep it hidden. Um, All right. Another question that perhaps our contact doesn't know the answer to. Uh huh. Um, if our target here is so fancy schmancy and lives up in the Elkins weft and has lots and lots of money. <laughs> Why is this artifact being shipped into the southern port, the poor people port, instead of uh, the big fancy one right next door? That is a question that they do not know the answer to. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's part of, of it's, I think, so Helbora is, like I said, sort of this very generally subdued um, mm -hmm. person and very uh, you know, very kind of closed. Um, but I think when you, uh, when you ask her that you can see, a, just, just that hint of, of, of frustration really, um, in terms of, uh, that, that they just don't know, um, basically anything about this. Um, and mm -hmm. there are, there are many questions, um, that like that, uh, that they, they just don't have the answers to, um, but either way, um, this is, this is, um, uh, definitely going to be something of, of pretty significant importance. Um, that much is clear. Um, if someone is going to, to these lengths to sort of keep things hidden and, and all that. Um, so this, this, this score has the potential to, to be enormous. Um, and, you know, being the ones to hire you, uh, the Bohemians will, uh, will take a cut and then the rest will go to, to you, the crew, um, as is, you know, kind of standard, whatever. Um, and, uh, then after that, Helbora sort of pauses a little bit, um, and then mentions the fact that it's, that it's fitting that this thing is such a big, um, seemingly such a big deal, 
um, because this is going to be her last um, basically act as the leader of the Bohemians here um, and says that she has been uh, recalled back to New Water Nest, um, which is sort of the center of, of kind of Bohemian activity, um, which I guess if... Um, here, I'll take you over to the world map here. Well, not world, continent map um, real quick. Um, so you get Tovon, Marshall's Cloak is over here. Um, New Water Nest is a city over on Tojeth, um, one of the cities. Tojeth is a lot bigger. Um, there's two, there's like a city and a smaller-ish town um, also on the back of Tojeth. But, um, so that's that. Um, More question. Mm -hmm. What time is it right now? And what time is the shindig? Um, so you'll have, this is, this is at least a couple days beforehand. So you'll, so okay. part of what we're going to do here is we're going to sort of do some, do some, uh, whatever Relation. legwork, legwork you see is, uh, see fit doing here. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's not a, in that regard, this is not a, that's not a concern. Um, so uh, what time does, does the party begin? The, so the party will begin, um, the, Generally, one of the big uh, parts of the festivities of the Vigil Flame, um, uh, I guess this might be a good good point to to explain some of this. So, um, if you see over here, um, this this big thing called the Maw, um, uh, part of what makes Marshall's Cloak and Tovon uh, so interesting and curious is uh, that. On a regular basis, um, there's this kind of buildup of like existential dread <laughs> that kind of cloaks everybody in the area, um, which culminates in, uh, in the area of the city or the in area the area of the, of the city. Um, okay. So this is something that like basically everybody in the city will feel. Um, it kind of cloaks over the whole city um, and uh, culminates in in basically a like sky laser really erupting from the maw, um, and this uh, this weird kind of spectral form of what looks like basically like a like a baby Toberon or something sort of acts out what seem to be like its final moments. Um, until it eventually falls and uh, ends up here where this, uh, the little one, as people call it, um, this kind of uh, seeming corpse of this like baby Toberon, basically. So it's, as you might imagine, a, a, a weird time. <laughs> um, this, this started in the city um, uh, like five, six or seven years ago or something. Um, I forget the exact, um, but it was the, um, what is uh, now referred to as the circle of the Sundered Veil, it's basically this cult um, that had performed this big, scary, like dark ritual that kind of like activated this whole thing. Um, and so now because of that, uh, that goes on um, on a regular basis. Uh, like, I mean, like every like month or every other month or something like that. Um, and um, the that like eruption thing happens at at midnight um, and any times and and there's now all these kind of weird things that that go on, um, particularly in the area surrounding the mall. Um, there's is it, yeah. Is it well timed? Like we know exactly when it will erupt at like yes. what day it will mm -hmm. erupt at midnight. Yep, and that will be the midnight of the festival of growth. Correct. So the vigil, the vigil of flame. It's it's this the the totality of this festival is split into two tar two parts. So from uh, basically what officially kind of begins at dusk is the vigil of flame that ends at midnight with the erupting of the the maw, um, and then the next day, um, or does it start at maybe it starts at dawn. Oh, this is a little cut. <laughs> Uh, this is important. Oh, yeah, we the need to know. the festival. Yeah, then the festival itself, uh, the festival of growth begins uh, officially at dawn. Um, so the vigil of flame is is kind of a time where everybody kind of um, 
you know, different different people have different practices, but uh, there's plenty of people that sort of like lean into that like building sense of existential dread, um, and uh, use the time to sort of like remember um, the loved ones or friends or whatever that have passed. Um, some people swear they can uh, communicate with the spirits of their deceased people um, during this time specifically. Um, lots of stuff like that. Um, one of the big traditions is that people will put up uh, like uh, usually fake uh, trees or like tree branches or stuff like in town squares and on, on the outsides of their houses. And at dusk um, at the beginning of this, um, they'll burn all the leaves, uh, leaves off of these trees and branches and stuff. Um, and that's sort of this period of, of, you know, traditionally period of kind of mourning um, up until dawn of the next day when they'll sort of like pin uh, new leaves and stuff onto the tree. Um, there's lots of uh, people that do traditions where they'll like, you know, write things on the leaves that are like their hopes for the new whatever. Um, but that part of the festival is like a, like, the dread is over. <laughs> Let's celebrate the fact that we're all alive um, and that kind of thing. So it's like this big sort of two part festival. Um, so this, this shindig at, um, uh, at this Nobus's house manor um, is uh, generally going to be starting from uh, uh, people will be showing up kind of before dusk. Um, but the, the thing like officially um, quote unquote gets underway um at about dusk um is this is this like a whole city celebration type yeah thing that's once? that's a whole a whole city tradition that will wide, be... everybody like goes all out like partying or is it just like everybody does no know, kind of so celebration? this this i mean um this might be a thing that we have to to sort of find out well i mean you're bohemians i i think <laughs> so generally the traditionally this is supposed to be a time of, of mourning during this period. Right. Um, but I think it's, it's, uh, probably not a stretch to say that, that, that you, uh, as Bohemians know about, um, some of the, 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 the extreme upper class people will, will throw these, um, kind of gatherings or whatever, um, and use them as a kind of a way to like distract themselves from that, that building dread sense that everybody gets um, and that kind of thing. So um, mo most of the people d I think wouldn't know about that because they probably try and, and I mean, for one, because there's separation, all the, the rich people live in certain neighborhoods um, that, you know, generally don't let not rich people in. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so, but that's, yeah, but that's, that's the, uh, so you would, you would imagine, uh, that that's, that's probably the kind of deal for, for this. Um, but as part of your, your legwork and stuff, you're welcome to, we're, we're welcome as we get into this to try and sort of figure out some more details of those things, um, and, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so before you go, uh, Hellbor asks you if you have any other questions about anything, um, after she just told you that, you know, this will be her sort of last act as the leader of the Bohemians before she, before she leaves. Um, and, um, kind of, uh, yeah, just so who's, re who's replacing you. Um, it'll be, it'll be her, her second in command, um, person that's probably hanging out here. Um, who is a person that I don't know who it is yet. I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> Is this a forced retirement or a chosen retirement? Um, I think she she kind of sighs a little bit and. Uh, I got you, fam. Yeah, she's thinking you. probably a little bit of both. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> what what did you say was the <clears throat> masculine version of Nobes? Uh, no. Bear. no... Which one do I have that on? It and is no there. no bar. No bar. Is there a no bar at this uh, party, or is it just the no bess? Um, let's see. Would she have this information? Um, prob 
Probably, yeah. Um, I imagine that she. Yeah, that she would. That. that she would know. So the Nobes Ortega uh, has never married. Um, she's um, any any misters. <laughs> Um, I'm sure, I'm sure there have been, like, on and off, uh, you know, paramours or whatever, um, but I think she's, she's probably gained a reputation for, for not being able to have any, any men stick to her. (laughs) Um, she is, uh, where do I have it? I have it here. Uh, yeah, I have her as, like early 60s ish so she's a little a little older um human. she is human yes um but uh she she kind of has a representation rep reputation for being a little like obsessive eccentric um and uh she 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 fancies herself um an expert on the lore of these um, ancient godlike beings known as the Cancrazins cartographers. Um, though I think it's, it's probably pretty clear that most of what she thinks she knows is, is pretty garbage. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's just kind of the general, um, the general information. I, I think she's she's not necessarily up until this point has not necessarily been the kind of person that um uh that like the bohemians have have had cause to pay attention to um they you know obviously would have looked into her a little bit um following she's not this trying um i mean she's she lives in elskenweft um which which is sure. the elskenweft Elskin has the forest person <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> that is true. Um, but El- Elskenweft is just for reference sake is kind of like the district of uh, of like new money. Um, Baston Ridge is like sort of the old money um, uh, area, basically. Um, so a lot of more sort of like uh, uh, bigger like dynasty type families um have their have their homes and things like that um elskin weft is is people who um came into money uh th- you know through some of the new shifts in government um were favorite people of of like the iron scabbard and um uh or the the fast and clasp or people like that um who are some of the ruling factions um and uh so these these are people who are sort of like fresher money, um, basically who are who are more more likely to be in line with kind of where the the more sort of like quasi fascistic elements of the government are sort of going. Um, uh, so um, so these are definitely definitely like r- rich people. Um, but she, I mean, the, the manor that she has up there is, is pretty huge. So, um, yeah, I guess she's, you know, probably at least in like the middle ish. <laughs> okay. Uh, but she's not particularly politically connected or active because then we would have been paying more attention to her. Correct. Okay. Do, do we know of anybody that's, uh, might be attending or would know about it or anything like that um that is any... that is certainly something we can find out okay we're not so we're not quite there yet but... um i mean yeah um or our contact doesn't necessarily know that i guess yeah let's see would she know like a general like crowd like you know do we do we know anybody whether that's the attendees or the guards yeah so 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 major so major curic the the unsheathed uh Mm -hmm. uh person is 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 uh as she said sort of being uh put up there as like a guest of honor kind of a thing um as uh yeah i mean it's it's not necessarily like a normal thing um but uh that would lead that would lead them to suspect that there's going to be a um not an insignificant um 
unsheathed presence, um, as as some of these richer neighborhoods tend to be places where um, there is generally a pretty thick unsheathed presence to begin with. Um, and uh, it's it's not unheard of to have, you know, richer families sort of like basically kind of paying for private security type things like hiring mm -hmm. um, unsheathed uh, to, to do that kind of stuff. But um, uh, I think she might suggest um, if you're if you're looking or maybe this is maybe this is her second command that, that suggests this. Um, uh, which maybe I should figure out who this is. Um, let's see. Um, let's have this person be, um, why don't we have this person be a human? Um, Humans. uh, this is going to be Kano. Um, I'll add this to this one when I find it over here. Um, H I J K. <laughs> um, so this will be it's a human male. Um, Let's see. Um, I think they'll be they'll be a little younger. Well, Hubbler is already okay, so maybe they'll be a little older. So like, we'll say forties. Um, and they are. Uh, second in command. Um. So they're they're sort of I think back sort of behind the 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 seat of the booth they've been standing most of this time sort of leaning on the back of the the chair, um, or or whatever. And um, he suggests that you might um, if you're if you're looking to find out who's going to be there. Um, uh, for one, this is the neighborhood of the the Society of Acceptable Losses. Um, who you have some manner of dealings with as the, as you're kind of on their territory. Um, he says they might be a good one to uh, to try and get some information out. Um, he also says that it might be likely uh, to try and see if there's anything that you can find out from uh, the Silken Song Camarada. Um, he said it's more more than more likely than not that. Um, some of them might have been hired in to, to help with, you know, to, to play at this party, um, or shindig gathering, whatever. Um, so those, those would be, uh, at least good starting points, um, for maybe finding some more information. Um, right. any, any other questions here? No, I think we're we're already getting into the questions. Of yeah, the, yeah, the great. Prep, so, um, so, uh, then uh, as a sort of way of sending you off, Helbora kind of raises her drink half up and and just gives you a kind of like a thank you. Doesn't say much more than that, but it's kind of understood that she's, um, you know, she's giving you the thank you for. Uh, for for helping her with this kind of send off, basically. <laughs> Next one's on um, me. And then, uh, and then she kind of disappears into a back room as the rest of the tavern goes on. Um, so here we're in a kind of um before we get into the as the book calls it the score section of the um the actual mission um we can take some time to do a little bit of uh kind of legwork um where we're in sort of a less pressured situation um if there's anything you want to like people you want to talk to try and get some information um and and try and sort of 
uh, scope things out or um, uh, try and figure out what you what you want to do. Um, ultimately, uh, mechanically, the way where this system works is we don't have to um, plan. We don't have to make a plan. Um, maybe I should just read this from the book here. I wouldn't make one anyways. Um, because this is, I actually think this is a really good, do, 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 where is this? Um, oh, wait, is it over? Okay. There's another page of the table of contents, guys. <laughs> uh engagement role there we go um so yeah here we go um your crew spends time planning each score they huddle around a flickering lantern in the lair look at scrawled maps whispering plots and screen uh, schemes bickering about the best approach lamenting the dangers ahead and lusting after stacks of coins but you the players don't have to do the nitty-gritty planning the characters take care of that off screen. All you have to do is choose what type of plan the characters have already made. There's no need to sweat all the little details and try to cover every eventuality ahead of time because the engagement role ultimately determines how much trouble you're in when this plan is put in motion. No plan is ever perfect. You can't account for everything. This system assumes that there's always some unknown factors and trouble, uh, major or minor, in every operation. You just have to make the best of it. Um, so there are six different types of plans detailed here. Um, assault, deception, stealth, occult, social, and transport. Um, and so when we get to the actual engagement role, we'll pick one of these plans, decide, um, basically decide on what our uh, plan of action is here. Um, and then each of one of those has a, a, a single sort of detail that we'll fill in. Um, we'll make that role. And then that role will tell us um, sort of how things get started and and kind of at what point we are uh, zooming in on the action. Um, but that's one of those sort of like cut to the action things where it's just like we'll decide what type of plan we're making, we'll make the roll, we'll see what happens, and then we'll, we'll go right into it. Um, so we don't have to worry it's about... like one per... I don't know what to call it, plot line? Per, so it's per like score, each, yeah. Each... each character is not picking their own it's per okay correct score. yep okay. so yeah you'll so you'll pick one uh one together um and at that point we'll pick our loadouts and all that kind of stuff um but basically so what we're trying to figure out now is to try and um get some information if you want um to sort of help you know what to expect a little bit um, and to figure out what you think would be the best um, sort of plan of action. Um, so let, let me read through these again, um, just so you can be thinking about what you might want to do. Um, so there's the assault option, which is do violence to a target. Uh, the detail we want to pick there is the point of attack. Uh, there's the deception, which is uh, lure, trick, or manipulate. The detail is the method of deception. Stealth which is to trespass unseen. The detail is the point of infiltration. Uh, there's occult, which is engage a supernatural power. The detail is the arcane method. There's social, which is negotiate, bargain, or persuade. The detail is the social connection. And last, we have transport, which is carry cargo or people through danger. The detail is the route and the means. Um, All right. So we'll get to... Um, deciding what that wants to be but um is there any anything we want to try and uh find out or scope out or um anything like that before we before we get to that yes all right let's do it let's make some rolls making rolls all right uh i th chayla yes. i have a feeling that um I might know some people. Yeah. And uh, I know somebody at the docks. And I, I think maybe we should split up and, uh, okay. you know, go ply our contacts for information. 
Yeah, you 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 go ask around your circle. I'll ask around my circle. I think that's <laughs> that's good. Um. Uh. So I'm assuming you're referencing uh, your Dafukatu, your your contact Indeed. there. Um. Yeah. Which which uh which dock do they work at? Um. I don't think we ever decided that because that was Iron Mast Shipyard. They're they're in the Iron Mast. Oh, did I write that? Okay, <laughs> yeah. just kidding. We did decide that. <laughs> um oh yeah yeah that's right because that that made the most sense to me um because i think the the uh sage hauler port which is the one up here is is a lot more tightly controlled um and i think would be less likely to have someone who's acting as a uh as a fence and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff so um all right uh who wants to go first um in in finding some stuff out here uh, I guess I'll go first. All right. Since I'm on, it's on the way to the hideout. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, and just just as a a sort of point point of whatever here. I, uh, so this this is um, this is again sort of we're we're pretty zoomed out here. So this is just kind of stuff that you're doing in the lead up in the couple days. So um, uh, so don't feel like we're. We're we're just sort of painting painting little scenes in in broad brushes here at this point. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I uh, Issel makes his way to the iron iron mast shipyard and uh, meets up with Dathukatu in an attempt to uh, figure out if he knows anything about what's go what's coming in any plans he knows any anything about security that he's noticed going on uh just in case he's heard anything okay great um fantastic all right so let's look at some uh gathering information roles um blah, 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 blah. when you want to know something specific about the fictional world your character can gather information uh the gm will ask how your character gathers that info or how he learned in the past uh, if it's common knowledge, blah blah blah. Um, if it's not common knowledge, or there's but there's no obstacle, a simple fortune roll determines the quality of the information you gather. Um, so let's see. So I think, yeah, I think this is because you're because this is your friend um, who's a contact. We don't need to like make a. Um, uh, a, 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 yeah, you don't need to like try and get them to talk here because the you know, right? Um, so there's um on the character sheets they have yeah. So if you look down at the bottom of your character sheet, mm -hmm. um, there's a uh, a little list that says gather information. Um, so these are just some example questions, um based on your class your playbook um uh, that you can that you can reference if you need um i think you you have a pretty good idea of what you're um yeah unfortunately um this isn't really a contact here. about how do i get into the house right but, um, right but what is this person what's really going on here might be the best one mhm mm uh. um yeah so uh, so Dathukatu is a Hathenborin, so that's that's a um, that's a person who their left uh, your like ears protruding from the sides of their head um, would normally be humans. Left arm is covered in fur. It ends in a bull or bison-like head with two small tusks, um, lower jaw, set of horns, blah blah, blah. Um, and this. Uh, this beast head, so to speak, is a separate individual from the rest of the body, having its own personality, its own um, even its own gender, um, uh, and the ability to think and speak for themselves. Um, so, uh, Dathukatu, yeah, I have that they are uh, so male, female. So the um, the per quote unquote per human part is male, and the animal head part is uh, female. For reference sakes, uh, for references sake, um, they're like uh, kind of middle management basically here at the Iron Mast, um, and they uh, 
for for you and for a select few others, they act as a act as a fence. That's how you know them. Um. Um. What? Um. Do you have any sense of of what kind of what kind of person you think they are? We can we can sort of roll for some of these if if uh, if you don't. But um, oh, just to... I, I I imagine them to be a somewhat um, jovial pair. Ooh, okay. Um, and perhaps they have a uh, a, a bit of banter between the two of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but uh, they're also. You know, they th that covers up a sort of uh, dark shrewdness, I think. Mm. Um, so how do you how do you uh, wh where and how do you imagine yourself uh, meeting here with with Dathukatsu? Are they like in their office somewhere or are you like meeting them somewhere else. Mm, no, I think I, sh I think I drop in on them at work. I probably sneak in through a back window into their office and wait for them <laughs> to be alone uh, before I make my presence known. So you totally Batman them? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how I roll. <laughs> uh, um, great. So how, um, how, how are you, uh, how are you getting this information uh, from them because we will we will roll with um, uh, an action roll here um, rip, rip, rip. Uh, I, I guess I don't really understand because we said because I don't I don't need to persuade them to tell me what they know They'll right so so you a... don't yeah so uh, if you're if you're looking at your um, I, I guess I am a bit cagey, though, about, you know, I'm not saying, hey, I got hired for this job, and, uh, you know, do you know anything about it? I'm right, just, right. I'm, I'm being a little bit more circumspect. I'm asking, hey, uh, I hear that something's coming in in a couple of days. Uh, you know anything <laughs> about this? And uh, um, what, what's, what's up with security? Do you, have you noticed anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Out of character. If, if you're... So, so looking at the... Um, Basically, to use the the actions here as a little bit of a as a little bit of a guide, um, the uh, so you can think of it like command would be like you, uh, you know, um, you know, directly uh, telling them to give you information. Consort would be like kind of being a little chummy with them or whatever. Um, whereas sway, you're trying to um, trying to pry and persuade. Um, oh look, that's well. well. I mean, obviously, I'm gonna pick command, but uh, it's... <laughs> well, I mean, that's 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 this is where the sort of the rubber meets the road, so to speak, of the like how, um, uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm very I'm very forthright, you know, I'm I'm yeah yeah oh, hello, I'm here for information, please give it to me. Command obedience with your force of personality, intimidate or threaten, lead an action with another creature, guys. Um, yeah, so I mean, is this is this the kind of thing that they sort of expect from you, um, and sort of they know that that's that's the the way that yeah, you. This is, this is basically the only way that I interact socially <laughs> with anybody. So yeah, is by like, yeah, way. I need information. Yep. Give it. Um, Hi, how are you? I don't care. Tell me now. <laughs> Where? So I think the uh, yeah, I mean yeah, you're Batmaning it. Um, <laughs> The I, I think they're they're trying to you know, uh, um, I'm trying to think of an example of things. That, it's it's kind of interesting where you're coming in, you're like very direct, very like, hey, I need this information. Um, what's going on? And they're like trying to banter back with you a little bit and like, ah, you know. <laughs> like, no, 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 just just give me the goods. Um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and make that roll, so you can actually click. Uh, directly I I on the word command. Yeah. On command, uh huh. What is my position? Uh, this doesn't matter for this. This is just a a what we call a fortune roll. So it's not uh, oh, we're a not fortune in a, roll. Yeah. Oh, does it say is fortune an option in there? It does. Oh. It gives me risky, control, desperate, or fortune. Oh well, this this would be a fortune roll. All right. Did it? It didn't do anything. Uh oh. Oh wait. Input value, effect, standard, limited, great, extreme, or zero. 
Uh, that doesn't matter. Just put in standard. It's. I think it gives you a couple prompts here. It probably bonus also dice, gives you a bonus zero. dice. No zero day. Yeah. All right. There we go. Uh, that's uh, a three. Um, so a three. Uh, so in this system, yeah, we have one to three is is a um, well in in this context for a fortune roll, um, uh, a one to a three is limited. Um, uh, you're sort of getting limited information. Um, four and five would be standard, and six would be a great amount of information. Um, so. Um, yeah, so you're getting limited information from this. Um, and the reason you're getting limited information from this is because they don't really have much information to give you. Um, you know, I think they spend some time kind of like, uh, like I said, sort of trying to uh, trying to chat you up a little bit and um, uh, cracking jokes at your expense and um, things like that. And, uh, but eventually when they, when they get to it, they're like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and... Um, they say that th th they haven't really noticed anything. Um, you know, they definitely are the kind of people that are gonna, uh, keep their ear to the ground here and always be looking out for things. Um, uh, but they, they haven't seen anything, uh, out of the ordinary. Um, the, the only thing they can think of, uh, that might possibly be, I mean, what, what, how much how much information are you giving them in terms of uh specifying what you're looking for well i hadn't i haven't mentioned the person mm -hmm. you know i've not mentioned the nobes yep um just basically looking for yeah differences in security or anything big coming in Mm -hmm. And clearly, uh, it sounds like no. Everything seems to be business as usual, and uh, that's disappointing, but not yeah. necessarily surprising. I think the only so with with this limited, I'll give you I'll give you this this one little bit um, that the only thing that they can think of is um, that like it's like I don't know. It might have been within the last like week, two week or so um, that there was a a. Uh, group of um uh a couple people in from the uh the ring march that came through here um mm. that we don't usually see um and uh it looked like they they you know we can say sort of don't expect to see ring march people here um all that often but they were here um and then never really saw anything other than that um like were they doing business here or were they traveling um i don't know that he uh was Notes. able to get any any information on that yeah okay well i know where my next stop is <laughs> <laughs> um all right let's uh let's jump over to chayla so what are you uh what are you after here so i think uh one of my first things i'm, I'm just gonna take a, a stroll and see if i can find uh trip who is an unsheathed uh -huh. corpsman. And, um, you know, since we have a little play playful thing going on. <laughs> I have I have an important question to ask. I put this yes. as a question. Is he, is he like, is he in love with you? Is that, is that what this, you know what? is I that what this thing is? I told him is? not to fall in love with me, but. <laughs> but he went and did it. Are. He went and did it anyways. <laughs> Probably. He, you know, he hasn't, he, he's too embarrassed to say it up front, but. You know, I, uh. <laughs> May or may not use that to my advantage sometimes. I mean, you know. You know. Um, Scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when uh, when one individual thinks another individual is good looking, I mean, <laughs> you just you just got to use that sometimes. Sometimes you just got to um, use it. Sometimes you got to use it. Um, so, you know, I'll go up to him. I'll, I'll flirt with him a little bit. Maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, say that he's he's looking particularly fine in whatever uniform he's wearing today. <laughs> he turns bright red, <laughs> Ex as he usually does. You know? <laughs> and um, I, I, I want to use this opportunity to more so get intel on the, the unsheathed, and maybe a little bit about Major Kirik. Okay. And her whereabouts. So you know, I might I might ask him how is. How work has been doing? If he's 
got has promotions going on or anything like that. If uh, he has any important details coming up or anything, because um, if there if there would be, you know, he he would be the man for that job. Mm, totally. Um, so this is I think this is more using my uh, using my sway. Okay. You would to... be the man for that job. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You would, you would look so great in that uniform, and you know, I don't know. Maybe if I could be there too. Not that I, not that I ever would, you know. But uh, I'd look great in dress. I mean, imagine what that would look like, you know. <laughs> um, so I, again, use just using this opportunity to see if there's any unsheathed movement. All right. Um, let's, uh, go ahead and, and, uh, hit that sway for me. So I literally hit the word Click sway. on the word sway. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, you should get a couple options there. So you can just hit fortune for the first one and then the rest of it doesn't matter. Fortune roll. Standard. Bonus dice zero. Yep. All right. So you get a five there. Um, because any of the, so... Oh, because I rolled two. Because you, yeah. So the gotcha. since you have two two dots there in sway, um, God, you any of these rolls, yeah. The way they work is you roll a certain number of dice, and then you just take the best result. So the you. more gotcha. the more you know dots you have or whatever, the more dice you're rolling, the higher the chance that you'll get a success. Obviously, gotcha. um, so uh, so with a five, uh, that's a standard amount of information. Um, so I think. He uh, probably makes some uh, some offhand comment about how um, you know uh, he he like uh, wishes that you you know weren't always like always seems like you're coming to find something out whenever you see him and <laughs> um, all, all right. this kind of stuff um, and and whatnot. But uh, so he's he's able to give you that. Um, there were, in fact, a um, uh, uh, a, a a decent number of um, of unsheathed that were were hired on to kind of uh, watch uh, this this gathering um, of the. Uh... Oh well, I guess that's a question. Do you do you mention um, Nobes Artiga specifically or? Hmm. No. Um. Okay. I keep I keep cards close to my chest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> totally. I I buy that. Um. So in in that case, I mean, just trying to think how he would how he would get this information to you. Um. I think he he's. Uh, yeah. I mean, he lets you know that that uh, it's pretty common. Um that uh on on this evening when there's um a fair amount of of you know wealthier people that are doing these types of things and he's like oh yeah you know everybody's getting hired out for for these uh gatherings up in the richer neighborhoods uh you know there was uh uh they got me hired on to to go up to this uh house in bastion ridge and um blah 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 and you know there's a bunch of people that got hired out for uh, for, uh, for this party and that party. Um, and there's a, it's a good number of them that got hired out for, for this, this, uh, lady up in, in, in Elskenweff too. And, um, she even hired, a uh, major Keurig. It, it's, uh, it's what the rumors are. Uh, last I heard she's, she's been up there for like a couple days. Um, she keeps, um, telling us uh you know there's been talk around the uh uh i don't know what's a gathering place for a <laughs> military police force <laughs> i don't know if they have water coolers but <laughs> keep hearing um water fountain the water fountain <laughs> um uh here and talk that they uh they've Hot bar. they've put her <laughs> that they've put her up uh and she's been uh she's been living it up there for a couple days um on the uh on this nobus's dime um um and, and 
then that could be you. That could be you one day. You know what? And and it will be. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um my favorite uncheese. <laughs> uh let me think if he has I think I think that's the uh if there's any uh yeah so on center it says you get good details uh clarifying and follow-up questions are possible so if you have any um clarifying or follow-up questions put me on the spot here <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, if, if you do if you don't is trying to give you a fair amount of information here right I, I guess really the only follow-up question i don't even know how to how to post this or how i would post this mm -hmm. but essentially saying you know what why such a why such a big party or who's who's throwing the big party or, uh well i mean you know you know how some of these rich folks get around this time like nobody nobody likes the stuff that happens around the the vigil it's but uh, most of us just have to kind of deal with it. All these rich folks up there, they get to, you know, they get to do their parties. They get to drink and laugh and eat and, you know, whatever. I don't I don't really pay much attention to what all goes on up there, but. Neither do I. Yeah. Not really that important anyway, so. <laughs> Um, he's like, all right, all right, well, um, I, hope, I hope to see you around again sometime. <laughs> You know you always do. <laughs> um, and then he he walks up and or walks off and has like you know a little like just a just a tiny bit of that little kind of like skip in the step and he should, he should awkward awkwardly try to give her a hug. Which <laughs> a side hug. <laughs> one of those good. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and like he tries he tries to go for the full hug and I just do like a one handed. Pat mm -hmm. on the back. <laughs> Ooh. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just enough, you know. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Um. All right, and then so Isley, you had another stop you wanted to make here. <clears throat> yeah. Um. I mean, sometime before before the day of the thing, I think that we need to meet up at the at the. Uh, at the hideout and exchange notes, but I'm not quite there yet. Totally, totally. Um, uh, let me pull this up. I'm going to go um, see if I can find Joa. So uh, first oh, stop, okay. first stop, I'm going to, I assume that he has a place of business of, you know, yeah. regular standard business in the Reshlin left. So I'm going to go there first and see if he's, um, you know, buffing quills and trimming <laughs> mustaches. Uh, so Joa I'm not is quite sure that a that a pocken goes and sees a barber. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, buffing quills. I think I think there's a fair amount of them that that get their their some some of them that get their quills trimmed and and things like that or okay, you know, whatever. Okay. Look, so I might even go in through the front door. Maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see. <laughs> Um, so Joa is, uh, is a, another, uh, member under the, uh, sort of bohemian umbrella here. Um, he's a human male, um, and is a barber, uh, that also does work as a medic, um, and is the kind of the crew's contact here. Um, so, so yeah, so he has his little barber shop, um, and you walk in and he's, uh, yeah, he's got a he's got a a, a barblish in the chair um, that he's uh, he's you know trimming their their trunk. Do I recognize their the barblish trunk fur? Ah, uh, no, it's just just some dude. Okay, <laughs> just some dude. Um, before we get to that, um, I'm just gonna I've been drinking too much water. I'm just gonna go pee real quick, and I will be <laughs> right back in like two seconds. Won't cheat, I promise. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have five command pips. <laughs> How did that happen? He'll never notice. He, he it's would've. even possible. It might be possible. 
<laughs> should, should we pretend that we uh we we meet up real quick to trade notes before we go off to do other things? Oh sure, but, you know maybe you, uh maybe <laughs> I we uh, I, we met I up at the hideout and uh, just you know in the shadows. And I learned what you learned <laughs> in the shadows. Didn't really get much off of uh, unsheath intel though. Well, I think it's particularly interesting that Kirik is already in residence. Right. Has um, been for a while. Yeah. Um and yeah, I I think I think some some scoping out is going to be in order eventually. Mm -hmm. But we got at least this guy to talk to. Right. Doesn't seem like a particularly large artifact. And you know, no, no grandeur. It doesn't seem. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, why do you why do you say that? Well, if if no one's really heard much about it, and mm. uh, ooh, the the ring march are could potentially be people that brought it in, since yeah. that was the only rare rare occurrence. Um, you know, they're not. They're a group of mercenaries and adventurers. So, yeah, mm -hmm. could, could could be old old artifact, not necessarily a grandeur one. Mm -hmm. So we may be dealing with a a pocketable <laughs> artifact, but we'll see. See, <laughs> we're um, just having a meeting in the shadows. Yeah. Oh, good. Just watching the watching the people walk by in whatever mm -hmm. district. Exchanging yeah, yeah. our uh, yeah, it it was in. Uh, I don't know. It was it was behind a blacksmith in the red works. So <laughs> the sound of the hammer covered. Oh uh, yeah, condition. always good. Always good to get that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. So you walk in and Joe is there. And uh, uh, are there multiple chairs? Can I like take a seat? Oh sure. Do I have yeah. To off to the side? No, okay. you can go go sit down in another chair. Um. And uh, I don't, do I have anything about him? He's uh, he's uh, oh, he's got he... he's got an incredible mustache. It's one of the that's things right. that's very important to note about him. Mm -hmm. Um, I also saw that his squint turned into blinking a lot, or something like that. Yeah, uh, he that? probably blinks too much. That's he's, that's it. And he's quirky. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than not blinking at all. So it's true. That's it could be worse. that's scary. Mm. Um. All right. So, what are you? Uh, so, what are you looking to 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 get from from Mr. Joa here? Well, at first, I'm a little bit uncomfortable that uh, other people are in the room. So, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm pretty taciturn to begin with. <laughs> but um, I assume at some point he finishes up with uh, the trunk of this other dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, who, I think who he's then pays and leaves. And... Yeah, definitely. Um, I think and he's we like find ourselves alone. They shape their trunks. Uh, do they shave them? No, like shape them. Like, oh, shape. Uh, sorry, this is just this is not even like pertinent to this. But, no, like, no, this is the most important thing. We it's but, like, it's very good to do, establish. Do they things. have hair on the trunks? Like, what are how are they? Yeah, so maybe it's, I just need to look up the character. The trunk. <laughs> so a, a barbless is the they're the ones that do have antlers. Um, for one, <laughs> right. um, they are. Uh, basically, they they uh, they don't have a nose, um, and they have a, a trunk on the back of their head, um, that basically looks as if it was like a big like braid or something, like a big fat uh, braid. Um, okay. but so yeah, they have this big trunk on that the back of their head. So their hair their hair goes sense. like back, uh, and then down, um, oh, okay. into their into their trunk. So. But you know, so if you, if, I was thinking of like elephant trunk, and I was uh, like, "How is this? What is happening?" Uh, back, back okay. of the head. Um, so, but you, yeah, I, I mean, got, I got this you know, if you get the, if you let the hair in your trunk get too long, then you just, you know, you're constantly um, inhaling the, you know. Oh yeah, that's no good, no good. Especially when you, you know, when you like working in the, uh, in the ironworks and stuff, and you're just yeah, getting too like hot. You gotta get your your summer getting your like summer. stuff stuck in there and. <laughs> Nice fade. I got you. Okay. <laughs> nice fade. <laughs> Joe, Joe the fade master. Um, That's right. 
Um, yeah, great. And so he he uh kind of nods you over to the to the back room as he like grabs a uh you know a rag and is is wiping his hands off and he's sitting there like cleaning his his scissors and stuff uh, as he you know asks I feel what's up that I don't actually have to go through with getting a, a quill buffing because <laughs> you know I don't I don't I wasn't really looking forward to spending all that time getting touched but <laughs> um, so I, I'm very happily going to the back room with him and even consider um, uh, being a little bit you know friendly and sociable but then I changed my mind and decided no 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 I'm just gonna <laughs> right to it again uh I I, so, ima- I imagine him like spending the time where you're awkwardly sitting in that chair, like trying to kind of shoot the shit with you, and <laughs> just, just like you just sitting there, just like, eh. <laughs> yep. yep. <clears throat> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not there. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> I, I I. So. Uh... I, uh, I, uh, I want you to tell me what the, what the ring march has been up to recently. Um, all right, well, let's make, let's, <laughs> Silence. Silence. uh, let's go, no. let's go ahead and make a, I'm, make the roll here to see, to see. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the uh, the dots in his. Oh, hey, there's five. Uh, good details, clarifying, and follow up questions are possible. Um, so you're looking for information on what the ring march has been up to. Um, uh, yeah, he. So he's. Um, uh, you know, mostly the same old stuff. They, you know, they they guard the gates. They uh, they run out on their expeditions. They. You know they've they come they come back with something recently, didn't they? Um, so it, word on the street uh, is that uh, there was a word group. Word on the street is great, but you know I'm talking about <laughs> word from the ring march. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I hear what you're asking. All right, yeah. so it's funny because they. <sighs> There was a group that went out a uh, week or two ago, maybe, um, that was uh, real small. And they can't have gone far, um, but they were they were real tight-lipped about the whole thing in a way that I haven't really, really seen them be before. Uh, but they went out and um, supposedly... Uh, it wasn't just a group of uh, ring march. It was just a couple, couple ring march people, and uh, from what I heard, there was a woman with them. And uh, they went out, and they came back, uh, and that's that's basically it. Like I said, they were real tight-lipped about the whole thing. Uh, pretty. Go ahead. Pretty. Uh, Pretty shady, if you ask me. I mean, you know, Ring March is on contract from the Unsheathed, but they're they're up to some 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 things, but usually pretty uh pretty above board. But this seemed uh seemed a little low for them. Yeah, totally. Seems absolutely uh, unconscionable, whatever it is. Uh, so <laughs> you definitely want to tell me more about this woman. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, like, is, this hum- is this a human woman? Is it a pocket woman? Old woman, young woman. Human woman, older. Um, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think if he would know. Um, no, I don't think I don't think he knows. Uh, he was able to get who who it is. Uh, just that it was a as a woman, older. Um, uh, looked kind of kind of fancy to be going out. <laughs> They went out the south gate, right? They went out the ring march gate. They went out the ring march gate. Do I have a name for this gate? <laughs> uh, yeah, the ring march gate. The ring march gate. Mm-hmm. See information. Um, where am I even looking? It would be Rushland left where I just was. 
there's probably a name for it I have in here somewhere, but because the iron the iron gate is the northern one, and it's probably like the bronze gate or something. I don't. Uh, all right, whatever. Not important. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what he's uh, that's what he's got for you there. Um, do you have any uh, clarifying or follow up questions? So you don't know where they went. You don't know like they went north south. Uh, you don't. Mm. This is interesting. Yeah, sorry, that's all I got. Like I said, real hush hush. Real suspicious. So, so who else was who? Who was on the crew? Like, like norm, normal stand-up guys, or you know the the, the the other ring marchers. It wasn't usually on these kind. Of, like, usually on smaller expeditions, you expect some of the you know the real top dogs to be out there because uh, it's you know in case you haven't heard, it's pretty dangerous outside the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh but uh so usually if they're going out with small groups, it's you expect uh you expect some more experienced people to be on those crews, but from what it sounded like it wasn't uh wasn't any big dogs. Um but uh just some some middle rank run of the mill ring marchers. Um I don't know who was on the crew. Uh, but, uh, yeah, real, real shady. <laughs> I give something like a half nod, and then I turn around and walk out of the room. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I'll, uh, see you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back when you need those quills buffed. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Looking a little, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, so yeah, I mean, we can assume that you guys, uh, that you meet back at the lair and are making, uh, you know, other preparations and things like that. Um, is there anything else we wanted to do before we, uh, think about getting into it here? Um, yeah. Go, go ahead. If you've got something else, I was going to say I, I I do want to make one more stop. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe this is the bar. Maybe this is the uh, the Silken Song Camerata building. Their headquarters. Their, I feel like I did say that they have a building somewhere. It would be in the GERD, right? <clears throat> Or maybe they just have a favorite bar that they play at. They do. They do. Yeah. They they Camerata does operate out of a music hall here in the GERD, where they keep their offices and administration as meager and unorganized as it is. It says in my notes. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so I think you should try to get hired. I'll go. I'll go there, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my my uh, wonderful enemy Alphys mm. is uh, typically there because he doesn't really have much to do otherwise. <laughs> Um, you know, and I, and I walk up to him and I'd say, uh, Era, who is, I, I believe I pronounced that correct. Mm -hmm. She is the musical director. Yep. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I was just here to talk to Era about possibly, uh, playing somewhere. She, she told me that, uh, uh, all, all the top bards are playing at a, at a certain party. Obviously not you, so, uh... <laughs> You know, where are you playing? He just gives you trying the, to goad him the darkest stare, <laughs> and I don't think he, <laughs> I think he just like points like over to one of the side offices and then just huffs off. I don't. <laughs> He's just not. He is not having any of that. <laughs> He's not about it. All right, fine, fine. I don't, I don't gotta talk to you. You should have used worst grammar when you ask him. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Forced him to engage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, you know, if, if he doesn't want to, did he point me in the direction of where other people were? Oh, uh, well, you, you were asking for error, finish? right? Oh no, I was saying that I talked to him. Oh, you talked I was, to? Oh, I, okay. 
I was bluffing, uh, bluffing a little bit, but I can go talk to her <laughs> if, if, if that's how that. Okay. Roll, roll, roll with that. So, uh, sure. I'm gonna talk to uh, to Era and uh, you know, say hey, maybe maybe looking for a little little side gig. You know, I'm. You know, a decent bard. <laughs> I'm sure you have all of your top guys doing something. What's what's the best gig you got going on here? <laughs> Um, um so the uh so just as a as a a note here so the the silicon slum camarada is is like the the equivalent of um i don't know if you see like a like a community yeah. group or whatever yes, but they're they not they're great. bad they're like so self-important <laughs> They're... Yeah, but they get they get hired for all these parties. But so. they get hired for all these parties because nobody knows any better. Like right. here, for all the rich people here, like any of this music culture stuff is like wall dressing to them. Like they don't <laughs> care. It's just like, oh, I'm hiring these musicians because it shows how much money I have to throw around and how important I am. Um, but they're all, you know, they're they're in the back playing bad stuff and <laughs> whatever um and so era this this velmiri uh woman uh velmiri are uh basically like sort of feather feathery um uh feather people with like four four eyes um and she is she is like the um, I don't know, Colin, I'm sure you've had some experience with some just like really bad directors. Um, but this is, this is that to a T. <laughs> right. She's like that, like high school director. Yes. Yes. That Who thinks, thinks she's like a professional. That the next production is the most important thing in the world and that everybody who doesn't think so is just absolutely crazy and needs to. Lame is. Lame uh, is <laughs> <laughs> anyways yeah you know they're doing they're doing lame is down at the it's it's <laughs> community center and it basically is uh you know the next production at the met <laughs> it's it's insufferable coming down here but you know <laughs> um so so she's in her office i think this place is an absolute mess um <laughs> uh the or I've organization is not one of her strong suits. Um, although she'll never say that. Um, and we'll yell at people for making mistakes because of her disorganization. <laughs> um, and, uh, she's in there. I, she's probably got like some tiny little like wireframe glasses type things. Although for a Vilmiri, uh, that would be pretty cool. I would imagine. Cause it's like, Four, four four eyes yeah because the um what do i have here or maybe maybe she maybe she's like 20 20 10 15 20 20 10 15 is <laughs> it four eyes with a, a pair in the quote-unquote normal spots and then another pair more towards the side of the head a little higher um and a little smaller too so it's like normal normal glasses and then like a little smaller <laughs> peripheral eyes. peripheral peripheral eyes yeah yeah um by monocles by by <laughs> monocles <laughs> totally it's Do like the except instead of the the bottom being the part of the lens it's like the inside is the lens where they look <laughs> uh, um details she's in there trying to yeah and she's so she's clearly a mess right now because she's trying to to organize a ton of gigs uh for all these gatherings that are going on with all these rich people um and uh and uh it's it's a mess it, it's mm. and she's you know she's uh she's super stressed about it but yeah she lets uh, the stress what? out by yelling at people and that's that's fair <laughs> but let me i i can see that you're you're stressed you're frustrated you know, it's it's hard to get all these guys in line sometimes. So listen, I'll help you out. The biggest party you got here, the fanciest one, the most high stress one. Let me take it. Give me some of your best guys. We'll do it for you. No stress for you right there. <laughs> um. All right. So this, I think this is a little bit more than a 
straight up gather information fortune roll because I think you're actually trying to get her to do something for you here. Uh, um, which is fine. I think that's great and super cool. Um, so what, um, what, uh, what action are you, uh, are you doing with this? This is, this is, uh, just to be clear about mechanics here. Uh, it is your job as the player to decide what, uh, action rating you are using. Um, uh, that's not my job to say, Hey, you're give me this role. Yeah. Um, I get to decide as the GM then what your, um, uh, positioning and effect are, um, based on, on that. Um, and we, we go from there. So, okay. Yeah. I was, I was, um, going in the lines of consort consort. Even um, if that is just, we can dumb it down to get information. Yeah. No, that sounds right. This is consort with connections background. from your heritage, background, friends, rivals. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, that is, uh, definitely what's going on, uh, to gain access to resources, information, people, or places. Um, this is literally what you're doing. Um, so go ahead and make that. Let's let's call this um, controlled. Uh, let's do controlled controlled standard. Okay, so consort controlled and standard. You said yeah. And zero bonus, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, a three and a three. Uh, so that's a. Um, Let's see, I, have, I know I have this here somewhere. Here we go. Um, on a controlled, uh, you okay? So on a controlled, um, one to three uh, says you falter, press on by seizing a risky opportunity, or withdraw and try a different approach. So, um, I think she she seizes on the fact that that you're trying to well, <laughs> she. The only thing she hears is that you're trying to take control away from her. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, and and says, uh, what, what did she say? Um, yeah, so we have to turn this into, I think, in order for you to get what you... Because your, your goal here is to try and get yourself hired on to a group in this uh, party. Is that what's going on here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So in order to, in order to get that, um, uh, we have to put this into, uh, to a more risky uh, situation here. Um, so. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think the way do, this do goes. Do you want me to rephrase this, uh, this conversation <laughs> or. No, I think what happens is uh, she um, she says that uh, she's like, all right, look, you want the most important party. Um, obviously, it's the uh, the no best. Uh, I got to remember what her name is. <laughs> Antigua. Uh, no. Obviously, it's the no best Antigua. Um, everyone is aware that uh, 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 her yes. is, is the... It's not important. Anyway, um, look, it, if you want a job on the Nogus, the Nobis Antigua uh, gathering, um, the uh, that's being run uh, by Alphas. Um, so if you if you want a job, if you want a slot there, you're gonna have to talk to him. Look, I've got so much to do here. There's so much to organize. This, uh, it's. Uh, are we done, please? Artiga, sorry. Yes. Artiga, Art what did I say? Artiga. I, I, I fed it to you wrong. <laughs> I read the R as an N. Oh, Antigua. <laughs> yeah. So the LC thing. Uh, yes, I, I apologize for taking so much of your time. Uh, she's she's already like. Oh, she's already gone. You've well, already you've already place. left the room in her mind. <laughs> so that I can I can throw in a uh, colorful. <laughs> name for her as I leave then. <laughs> um so yeah so if you if you want to get into this party uh you're gonna have to go uh Alphys is your way in here that's 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 good to put me in a risky situation good job <laughs> <clears throat> well you know I'll always try I'll always try without this 
Alphys, but, uh, you know, I already pissed him off already. You so. did, yeah. Well, I mean, you already did that just by existing, so. This is true. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, you so... left me behind, I assume. I'm, I'm, not, I'm nowhere around. <laughs> well, maybe you're in the rafters. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> in the dark corners somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I do tra- trap him in the back room, and uh, you appear. But <laughs> well, well, I was thinking maybe I could pick his pocket to see if we could, could blackmail him. But um, I I suspect that I'm one. I'm not around. I'm, <laughs> I'm, oh, you're gonna go talk to people? I have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was just like, let me let me quick make one more stop before I uh, meet you, meet you over at the uh, mm-hmm. clubhouse. <laughs> um so i'm 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 gonna attempt you never know you never know what you could get give it a shot with alphys here so i say okay listen i was uh talk to eris i guess you have been improving <laughs> and it, it seems like you got the best gig going on wondering if you would uh maybe like to try a little friendly competition here at this very fancy shindig you know if you uh aren't afraid to go up against me put me on your troop that way we can uh settle this once and for all um all right let's make a let's make a roll see how this goes uh so this will be uh what uh what do you what do you think you're you're doing here um this would probably be a sway i think that sounds right that sounds good um, so let's yeah. do that sway. Uh, so this will be risky, risky. Uh, risky standard. Yeah. Risky standard. <laughs> six and one. All right. So that's a six. Uh, so you do it. Um, so I think as soon as you mention uh, a competition, uh, you he gets that like. <laughs> He knows. He can't say no. <laughs> he can't. You you got him with that one, and he's like, "Look, the all right, fine." At the party, there are three rooms that we are hired to play in. It's customary to have tips given to the musicians. No one really cares. Whatever. Not important. I'll take one room. You take another room. Mm -hmm. Most tips at the end of the night. Okay. Who's in the third room, though? Are they going to be part of this competition as well? (laughs) They're not worth it. (laughs) What kind of crowd are we talking about here? A rich one. <laughs> All right, I see. I see you want to. You, well, you want me to be at a little disadvantage here. I think that's a little cheating. We gotta. We gotta even the fields here. So you, you know, came I gotta, to I me. Know th- All right. <laughs> at specifically, I just make sure we have the same intel. look, you came to me after I said specifically the last time I saw you that I never wanted to see you again. Well, we'll be in separate rooms, so you won't have to see me. Exactly. All right. <laughs> I'll see you then. What time? Uh, and he tells you the time that they're supposed to go over to the party. A little, a little before that, you know, they're probably playing like prelude music before before the uh, official dusk start time. But um, that's uh, yeah, that's that. Okay. It's on. It's on. See you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he goes back to um, uh, what did I flute. say? Polishing his flute. <laughs> that sounds uh, really dirty. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, not a euphemism. Him. Actually, sitting there. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Actually. Oh uh, man, he's uh. Yeah, I would say he's like making reads or something, but uh, it's not. 
read it. That's really probably yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. Great. Well. So that sounds like you've got a way in at least. Um. Yeah. Which uh, which is great. Um. So are we are we looking to uh to get get going here? Maybe. Yeah. Let's let's. I gotta check in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I, I would really like to do a little preliminary B&E. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is, if this is necessarily allowed. <laughs> but, like, you know, I, a day or two days before to, like, tr see if I can sneak in and, you know, poke around her documents and see if I can find any information without alerting anybody. With You know, that would be the goal, obviously. Um, I don't know if... If that's a little bit cheaty, though, in this well, situation. here's here's that's kind of what we're going to be doing the day of anyway. Yeah, I think here's what I'll say um, is so one of the um, in in dealing with the way that they do this whole like act now plan later thing, um, there is a mechanic in place um, to uh, instead of you know having to do all this meticulously uh, planning out everything beforehand. Um, we do the engagement role and then when things happen uh, after the engagement role or, or during the course of the mission, um, they, uh, the game has a system to let you do uh, flashbacks um, basically. So, uh, and you can uh... <laughs> record scratch. I'm sure you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> well, so this lets, uh, um, let me. Yeah, I did. I did read that. Yeah, section. yeah. So um, basically, it lets you um, establish uh, details and things uh, to 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 let you do things after the fact. So I, I think, um, uh, and based on like how simple or plausible or complicated, um, I don't know why I'm looking through this because I doubt it's in here. Where I'm looking. Um, uh, but you you pay you pay anywhere from zero to two or maybe more stress depending upon how, like how how convoluted um, this potential. But it lets you have that cool moment of like, oh yeah, I totally prepared for this eventuality, um, and uh, and did that. So I I think why don't we why don't we move towards our engagement role? Um, do that, and then if there are things that potentially could have could have been gained by um by doing something like that uh then then we can we can do that in in the the way of of flashbacks um but especially because uh part of your you know mission specifically was to or optional objective was to gain gain more information so like you said sure. that's kind of what you're doing sure. it's just i i would have i would have liked to have you know canvassed the <laughs> the spot to mm -hmm. you know know what's going on there and ideally figure out why on earth Kirik is already there and like what's going on day to day i want to know that information um mm -hmm. yeah and i think i think that's stuff that um uh when we're talking about in. yeah that, that we can i think we can flash back to yeah that you you know all right um so uh let's let's look at our um, engagement role here. Uh, also, do we uh, load out? Do we do that now? Or yeah, so we'll do that with uh, as we go, as soon as I can find this again. Um, yeah, so we'll do that when we uh, after we or as we're doing the engagement role, basically. Do, 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 do. Anything engagement engagement role one twenty eight. Okay. Um, so, do we have an idea of uh, what type of plan we're we're looking for? I think you're. I, I think we've really got two separate infiltrations going on <laughs> yeah, simultaneously. <I> know. <laughs> you know, you're walking in the front door or maybe the back door, right? Um, and I'm like going in a third story window. Or, or, you, how many floors <laughs> is this building? Uh, yeah, probably like a bunch. Two or okay. three, two or three, I think is. Okay, I'm going through a top story window. 
Um, let's see. Doo -doo -ba -doo. One, ideally, that's dark. Yeah, I mean, so... I guess my... Um, why don't we... Um, I'm trying to think if there's a way to, to try and, and, uh, cause we should, I think we should be a little more, uh, since we're making the same role, we should be a little bit more unified about the way we're going mm -hmm. in. Um, so I mean, is there maybe a, uh, if you're thinking of, of, of a, you know, sort of stealthier angle, is there, is there a way that we could fold you into, to what Chayla is doing? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Can I can I like make him my roadie, and <laughs> you know like have him calm? So like I'm kind of doing my legitimate thing, setting up and stuff like that. Maybe I have him carry a whole bunch of like empty boxes and stuff in, mm. and well, I, I guess we're going into more and more details here. But, sure, sure, sure. Um. So, so thinking so as far as the planning and load this is more about like how we get in there mm -hmm. is that what this is yeah yeah so so maybe maybe we go the more deception route so it's like we're trying to basically sneak Issel in right under their noses type of deal yeah 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 okay um comfortable with this this isn't really how i like to operate <laughs> I, I understand this is the way we got to do it and you can you can do. disappear as quickly as you want to i just i would rather they not know i was ever there rather than have to worry about you know being missed but all right i well, see, will that's, say that's, i think like the deception part of it is like we're trying to like if i give you like five boxes so that you're not actually ever really seen yeah i'll say i'll say as a as a point of common knowledge here um, there in, in these types of events, uh, there's, it's, uh, it's a very safe assumption to say that there's going to be a, a good amount of, uh, like servants and stuff, um, swarming around and a large majority of those, um, more likely than not are going to be pocket. Uh -huh. Um, All right. I think fine. that's a that's a fairly common Inconvenient. common knowledge thing, um, <laughs> which not wearing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Will you at least buff your quills? <laughs> um. So fine. I think <laughs> I think having you, yeah, getting you a way in like this, I think you know, it's it's not the kind of thing that you just be able to sort of like walk in, uh, right. and and pretend you're a servant or something, but. Um, There's some sort of finesse that yeah. has to happen, but we'll so uh, yeah, so a deception. Okay, um, does that work for you, Colin? Does that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that's good that you're uh, the because the deception part of it is yeah. So the detail we want is the method of deception. So you're 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 basically using this musician thing as a as a kind of a cover uh, to get in. Yes, it's um, kind of it's it's like one of those like right like right under their noses. Mm -hmm. right? If they were actually looking and paying attention, and we weren't using sleight of hand tricks on them, then they would see it. But yeah, kind of doing that sort of distraction, not showing his face completely, and right, you know, right, 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 one of those things. Like, how dare you touch a bard's? <laughs> <laughs> instruments it. boxes it's worth more than you are <laughs> oh gosh That's um kind of tomfoolery all right so um all right so before we do well okay we'll do this after the engagement roll um because that'll be part of the other thing um okay so let's let's make an engagement roll uh so for the engagement roll you start with uh one die for sheer luck. <laughs> um, and then we ask some questions to figure out how many more or less die we're using for this role. Um, so is this operation particularly bold or daring? Yes. Um, or getting is me it like... in is getting, getting me uh... in for any means other than B and E 
is particularly bold and daring. <laughs> I think that's yeah. I mean, I think given I think give him some social lessons before this. <laughs> given given what you're, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. Um, uh, so take so that's we're up to two. You're allowed to say no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I. This is this is also me being a fan of the players. Um, <laughs> Uh, is this operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? Take minus one. Uh, no, I don't think that's true. I think it is. Um, so you're still at two. Uh, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Take plus one. Um, I, the, the I, the target being the Nobis. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I think yes because you're <laughs> you're using the 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 situation here applying something that you do um and yeah i think that could that could be construed as as being called a vulnerability um yeah no, yeah yeah of course of course yes oh definitely so yeah, two. Well, yeah that oh my that was the best answer i've heard <laughs> that's brilliant absolutely How, where do you come up with this stuff right off the dome um <laughs> Is, is is the target strongest against this approach, or do they have particular defenses or spe special preparations? Take minus one. Um, Say that again. So is I, I the don't, I don't think that they're particularly by default defending defended against this. I mean, they're throwing a party, but have yes. they taken special precautions? That I do not know. Only you do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um. A special precaution? No, I think I think special precautions. Not n no, not necessarily. Um, so that's that. Uh, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? Take plus one. Uh, I mean, we've done that. So yes. So that's up to four. <laughs> um, are any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? Take minus one. I'm gonna say that's a yes. <laughs> yes. Alphys. <laughs> <Alphys. laughs> Um, are there any other elements that you want to consider? Uh, tier, location, etc. Is this our hunting ground? Uh, yes, this is your hunting ground. Um, okay. I guess we were supposed to... There was supposed to be a thing for that, wasn't there? Um, uh, where is that? I don't remember where that <laughs> was. Because um, there was something about... All right, let me, yeah, I should find it. Crew. Funding grounds. When you prepare to execute an operation on your of your preferred type on your hunting ground, which this is and this is, uh, you get plus one D to any gather information rolls uh, and free additional downtime activity to contribute. Uh, okay, so... So I maybe should have gotten some additional rolls. So, <laughs> so maybe. O oops. Okay. But um, that's fine. That's fine. We, we, we got what we needed. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. It's too late. Too late. Um, oh. Or flashbacks. You never know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so that sounds to me. I'm I'm trying to think. Although, is 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 this a burglary? This is a burglary. I, okay. Right? I mean, you're trying to get <laughs> in and, and get... Well, it's a... I, I mean, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter at this point, right? <laughs> it's yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Um, it will be a burglary. <laughs> if I have your anything to say might about all be it, <laughs> that's right. How are you gonna eat your salad now? Ha! Um, <laughs> the the only thing I can maybe say because they're talking about like tier considerations is that. The unsheathed definitely has a presence here, and they're tier four. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although I ignore tier distinctions. This is true. Um, what's the what's the the wording on that? I should. You are not affected by quality or tier when you bypass, bypass security, security measures. measures. Specifically, security measures. Um, I mean, I think guards are a security measure. Sure. Um, I think that's probably <laughs> mostly talking about it in the context of the thing, but uh, we'll, we'll call that yeah. even. So let's let's do a 3d6. Uh, three, three um, so uh, I think that's all we need, right? 
Is there a button for this? Um, I don't see a button. I'm not sure. If oh, there's roll a engagement. There it is. Roll engagement. All right. Where's someone that? click that. That's on the uh, crew sheet. Someone click that roll engagement and tell me what pops up. I don't even know. Where? What is this crew? Where is this crew sheet? Uh, the crew sheet is the memories rest. Is there above all the characters on the journal page? I have pressed it. We are rolling three dice. Oh. Three dice. Yeah. All right. I am submitting. Oh, wow. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> that is for our lovely viewers on Twitch. Um, <laughs> that is a two, a two, and another two. Um, He's across the board. Fantastic. Uh, you get bonus points for rolling the same thing. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's a that's a bad result. You're in a desperate position when the action starts. Cool, cool. cool. Um, uh. So, okay. Um, all right, so let's <laughs> let's uh, let's paint some pictures here. Um, oh, we need to uh, load. We need to discuss load. Our um, items. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, probably should have done that before we made this roll, but that's okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Item loadouts, 127, right here. Literally right there. Um, after the plan and detail are in place, each player chooses their character's load. This indicates uh, indicates how much stuff they're carrying on the operation. Uh, they don't have to select individual items, just the maximum amount they'll have access to during the action. Uh, um, load. Okay, so if you see on your character sheet, yeah, yeah, you've got uh, your load buttons right below your uh, playbook name. Uh, so one to three, uh, so up to three load is light. Uh, you're faster, less conspicuous. You blend in uh, with citizens. Uh, up to five is normal. You look like a scoundrel ready for trouble. Uh, six, up to six is heavy, which you're slower. You look like an operative on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's, so it looks like Isla, you've chosen light. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I think I would probably be a light in this situation as well. Um, yeah, because you're trying to, to It would be very light. difficult to, <laughs> to um, justify being you thought, this was my, caught, so. you thought this was my split oboe? Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. I'm here to play the music, and you're like strapped up it's with like rocket launchers and Arnold Schwarzenegger getting ready for... Uh... A, lot of little, a little flute. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, I have one important question to ask now. Uh, what are each of you wearing to this party? I am wearing... Uh, um, well, previously, <laughs> I had scoped out the building. And, you know, I'd, I'd set up in a shadowy alley across the street and I paid a lot of attention to what the servants were wearing and I picked clothing that I'm, I'm not like wearing their costume or anything but I <laughs> picked out some clothing that would sort of blend in be one one could assume that I was a member of the staff or somebody's staff, sure. somebody's staff somewhere somebody's staff somewhere has a person that looks like you right now yep <clears throat> all right um i'm obviously dressed as a bard as a entertainer musician um which in this regard uh we'll say we'll, we'll say a, a decent dress nothing too flashy so i don't think i would necessarily blend in with nobility per se mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> Nice. Um, all right. <clears throat> so, um, so you uh, you've walked up to uh, to Nobis Artiga's Manor here, um, and this this place is 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 huge. Um, <clears throat> uh, so 
Elskin, Elskin Weft is, a lot of it is uh, territory that used to belong to the Knights of the Holy Ground um, and then was um, <clears throat> sort of uh, bought up and taken over by by this sort of new money that we've described. Um, so it's, it's a lot of things that are sort of built over top of, uh, you know, what you would expect to see in a sort of religious military uh, group of people. Um, and, and stuff's been built over top of that. A lot of the, um, the architecture here in this, um, I'm, I'm imagining as what I'm sort of calling like f fantasy minimalism. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means, but cause I was looking up, I was like looking up a bunch of, um, cause, I, cause as I've, I've said that this, uh, the iron sky in particular are this sort of like quasi fascistic. Um, I can say words, um, uh, sort of controlling power. And so I went, <laughs> on a wikipedia rabbit hole one night and looked up like fascist architecture <laughs> just because i was curious about it um and and a lot of it's like uh you know stuff in in uh like mussolini's italy and um stuff like that but it's um it's definitely that kind of um i don't know that you would consider it like uh like brutalist uh or whatever but bones of your enemy <laughs> but a lot of it is it's very it's it has a a a plainness to it um that that is sort of more uh reminiscent of 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 like uh some like a kind of minimalism um but there's this this it's 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 minimal in nature uh because there's not a lot of like fancy embellishment to it but it is very um, like strong and uh, powerful, um, and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's the sort of architecture that you see around here. Um, lots of pillars. Yeah, lots of lots of like <laughs> just plain pillars, like nothing like super fancy or um, whatever that. But yeah, lots of pillars, lots of like uh, sort of square edges and stuff. I kind of, I kind of. So the uh, the 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 kind of climate biome um on on tovon i'm imagining as being sort of like american southwest ish um like sort of west southwest um so it's it's relatively dry ish um and there's lots of like sage and and uh uh you know like joshua tree and juniper and scrub like scrubby things like that um and in country yeah so um and so w one of the other things i was like kind of thinking of as a, as a kind of a touchstone was certain elements of like um i guess more modern like greek architecture where it's like that sort of kind of uh plain white um and sort of uh boxy um uh, but yeah, I don't know if any of that's helpful visualizing anything. Um, blah, blah, blah. we take mm -hmm. a short, a short break. Yeah, this is a good time to take a short break. Absolutely. <laughs> um, like, oh no, we are about to fail. Yes. Next time, commercial. we are heroes. <laughs> commercial break. Everybody. Commercial break. Um, so yeah, why don't we take uh like ten ten minutes or so? Is that all right? Okay. Or, I probably good. don't need that long, but that's fine. Yeah, I'm probably gonna fine. go get something to eat really quick. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, let me put this up. It's cool and it's neat. All right, we'll be back.
Hit it, Maestro. Hit it. Um, okay, so. Um, Manor's big. Uh, there's <laughs> lots of gardens and stuff. Um, where is my... There we go. Um, there's big garden grounds. Um, so, as you're getting close to this place... Um, <clears throat> Judging from from what your friend uh, uh, the guy um, Trep, Trep, guy? yeah, Trep. Um, judging from what he told you, um, th- you are surprised to find um, that this place is um, there are a a lot of unsheathed here. <laughs> Um, Curse you, trap. <laughs> um, and I think I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a way you would be able to to tell this or not. But if, from looking around, I feel like maybe you get the sense that uh, some of this. Well, because you're getting there kind of early, right? Yes. Um. That. So I think you you can see that there's like uh small groups like uh arriving uh of of unsheathed arriving kind of thing where mm-hmm. it sort of gives you the sense that uh uh Trump wasn't lying to you or anything um but there was maybe like a last minute like hey we should beef up security here um whether it was uh you know the 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 nobis getting paranoid or uh, or somebody found something out or something like that. Um, uh, but for whatever reason, there are is more of an unsheathed presence here than you were expecting there to be. Um, and as you are going up, uh, you're you're kind of filtering in. Uh, maybe you catch uh, catch up with a couple of the other um, musicians um, and are are working your way in, and you find. That there is um, an unsheathed, uh, basically uh, checking people in, um, and you are um, uh, walking up to the door, and um, an, an unsheathed uh, uh, corpsman uh, comes up to all of you, um, and uh, he, they. Because we're in a desperate position here, so we need to get pretty. <laughs> um, th- so they, uh, they ask to, uh, they ask to look through your your things and make sure that you're not carrying uh, any like contraband in or or those sorts of things. So they're they're looking to kind of give you a a pat down here. Um, and this would also mean that, uh, that's not what I want, um, that, uh, they could potentially find, uh, stuff on you, you know, you are a light load here, but you would still have, you know, some, some (laughs) things on you. Uh, so, uh, they are, they are there with you, um. Asking to, uh, you know, to to basically about to give you the the pat down here and look through your your uh, your instrument case and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what what do you do? Excuse me, sir. Do you have a search warrant for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, great question. What do we do? Uh, did we see th- did we see them coming? Did we have time to co- to um, converse? Um, to- I think to to honor the nature of the desperate position, I think this is probably a like you rounded a corner in the gardens and kind of came right up to this. So uh, maybe like a couple seconds, uh, but not okay. much. Um. So we obviously prepared to come here together. Uh, Chela, what 
shouldn't he find? And do I know where it is? And can I pick it off you? Good question. Or were we supposed to pick what items we have? No. Or? So no. the so the way we'll oh, pick okay. the way we'll pick items is that uh, yeah, whenever basically you'll you'll mark them uh, when when you decide you need them. So in this case, uh, if you're looking to get stuff off of her and then like hide it somewhere or something. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm going to like, if if she brought knives or lockpicks or something that this mm -hmm. guy cannot find, that I would like pick her pocket of them and then go fade into the crowd, try to make it look like, oh, I wasn't with her. I was just walking by, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> you know, bu bugger off, so that uh, she can be searched and be let in, and it's all fine, and I'll try and get in and find her later. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Uh, so what, um, uh, what action is that? So I, I, that would be picking her pocket with finesse. Mm-hmm. Okay. Guess what I'm, and finesse and I'm, and I'm going to push myself. Ooh, all right. Look at you knowing all the rules and stuff. <laughs> because I want this to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do I hit... Do I hit the push myself button before I hit the finesse, uh, or does it matter? Oh, look! Is it is it just a little thingy? I don't think there's a button for that. So pushing yeah, yourself, so pushing yourself oh, okay. is uh, is taking two stress. So you would yeah. tick two stress off of your stress track right. there. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, two stress. Boom. Boom. And then I'm going to hit finesse. Yep. And take. Uh, position. So of... this will be desperate. Desperate. Uh, and we'll call effect. this standard. Oh, standard. Okay. And bonus die. So oh, you'll get one. one one bonus die. Mm -hmm. And I roll. Uh, two, a one, and a six. Thank goodness <laughs> I pushed myself. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> um, okay. So, so you're looking to to get this stuff off of her and then you go somewhere else. So you're not right. And so that, that, that going somewhere else is probably a prowl. It's probably a different, I would think that, that that's a different action. Just getting the mm -hmm. stuff off of her yes. unnoticed is one and then getting away. I agree. Suspicion is a second. So what's your, uh, so what's your objective for, for this role for, for this, for the, for what's coming next, basically. Oh, for what's coming next. Um, for what's coming next is um, maybe mm -hmm. I'll like. I'll are you? Little, I'll, sh I'll mm. shove her a little bit to make the in, uh, the idea that we ran into each other but don't know each other. And mm -hmm. like I'll say something rude, yeah. and then I'll wander off in a different direction um, towards towards a group of pocken servants mm -hmm. into whom I will um, you know fade into them. Yeah. And become indistinct. Great. Um so give me <clears throat> uh yeah, give me go ahead and or wait, sir, one more th um so whenever you make a desperate roll which you just did. Every time you make a desperate action, mark 1 XP in that action's attribute. Uh so prowess that was a one. prowess. Yep. Great. So there you go. First XP of the game. Woo! Um <clears throat> Um, what was that? What did, what what did you just add? So I mean, like I'm looking at my character sheet. So yeah. Like, what is the oh, under, so uh, the little flags next to the word prowess. So I he did that. Off one of them. Oh. Okay. That's uh that's marking XP. Gotcha. What does uh, that do? Uh, you you use XP to get better. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think when it fills up, mm -hmm. I get to take another pip. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> when you fill yeah, when you fill the track, you get to add another one. Um, great. Uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and make that prowl. Um, and this one I'm not pushing myself on because okay. I have three in it already. Uh, position is still risky or, or still desperate. Let's, um, I think getting, getting a, a full success on that last one, I think you, you are able to get yourself. So we'll call this risky. Uh, well, yeah, we'll call this risky standard. And no bonus dice. And no submit. bonus. And there's one, five. one, and five. Okay, so oh. the five. It's always those, those last die. Yeah. 
Um, so you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer harm. A complication occurs. You have reduced effect. You end up in a desperate position. Um, so are you... Okay, so I think I think what... Well, okay, here's a here's a clarifying question. So, are you with this? Are you trying to get through this crowd and get into the building, or just sort of get away from that situation? I'm just trying to get away from the situation. Okay, great. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll get you um away from the situation. So that part of it uh succeeds, um. Um, reduced effect. Um, so perhaps, perhaps I do not fully alleviate suspicion from Chela. Yeah. Well, I think I think here's what happens. Uh, so this is going to introduce a um, a core part of how this game works. Where did I see that? Oh wait, is that here? Yes, I'll do it here. So I will do this on the the crew uh, uh, play sheet here. Um, and a fun if uh, if I haven't mentioned this, uh, you can double click on the top of uh, like the top bar of a uh, one of your player boxes or whatever, and it'll minimize it. And then double click it again when it's like. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I so that you. way you don't have to keep, like, closing it and I opening it all back up or whatever. So, yeah, you can also change settings uh, on the... Um, oh, the yeah. ...your icon and set it and set it so that they are pop out in new windows. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. Have. Yeah, you can also do that. Gotcha. Um, so, I'm going to go down... Uh, so, if you go down on the, uh, the crew playbook, there's the section right above the notes... Um, that is called clocks. Okay. Um, I am going to start a clock. Uh -uh. Um, so the way this is, this is kind of a, a way to track, uh, uh, a bunch of things. Um, but this clock is going to be called unsheathed suspicion. Oh, no. Is that how you spell suspicion? Sus I I rip off a wanted poster from the wall. <laughs> That's how this works. No, right? there's not a. <laughs> oh, come on. Suspicion, suspicion. Right. Okay, whatever. Um, and I will tick that. Whoa, not four times. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tick it once. I didn't. It. Yeah, I guess it makes sense that it goes clock that fast. clockwise on. on a clock. <laughs> on, only four. Oh, okay. Um, only four. <laughs> three more strikes three more strikes and then um yeah because i think so you uh so you see him uh particularly chayla you see the unshi that's 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 uh got you here um mm -hmm. you see him kind of like uh Clock him. squint yeah you see him ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you see him kind of squint a little bit as he sees you him bump into you and uh you he know gives a nod to other people yeah it's the uh, other unsheathed unsheathed corpman will remember that <laughs> oh, no. oh oh dear kind of a thing <laughs> um so that's uh so that's what's going there um so then with that uh uh so you get pat down i guess basically um mm -hmm. were you gonna try and do anything in there or sorry i just sort of like took over that situation no absolutely <laughs> this is this is and this is part of my job as a gm where there's going to be a lot of me sort of like I, I it's like i'm holding a spotlight and i sort of am am looking to go back and forth and 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 do that kind of thing so that's that's going to be a good a good flow of how this goes um yeah. so uh so so what yeah so what are you doing now chayla um assuming that i can now enter mm -hmm. is that yes okay um if so, if that's if that's what you're doing, uh, so we'll we'll get to the point where you've gone in. Um, uh, I guess so. You get inside, um, and inside of this building, 
uh, it's, uh, as I said, very large. Um, and despite the, um, uh, it's, so it's still not quite, uh, hasn't got a dusk yet. Cause you guys are as early as we've established. Um, mm-hmm. but I think you can, you can already feel that, that, uh, that familiar sense of sort of that rising, um, existential dread <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, that's, uh, starting to, to nod up a little bit in you. Um, and, uh, as you walk in, you can see, uh, uh, most of what's happening now is, is people are sort of getting things ready. Uh, there's a lot of those, um, servants, uh, running around, um, getting food set up. There's food tables all over the place. Um, and as you're, you're going to, uh, find the spot, I mean, we're, I think we're kind of assuming that, that Alphys told you what was up and gave you the, the deets, uh, of how this was supposed to go. Um, he told you that you were supposed to be, uh, setting up in the, uh, the, I was going to say the green room. Um, but I lit, I lit, well, yeah, maybe he told you the green room and you weren't exactly sure what that meant. But when you get inside, you understand (laughs) that a lot of the, all of the rooms in this place, have been uh, like decorated and stuff in in these very distinct colors. colors. So there's like a red room and a blue room and a purple room and a literal green room. Um, Getty. Uh, and that's uh, that's been been set up. There's a little um, uh, spot kind of tucked in one of the corners uh, where there's a little uh, spot for you to. That well, that is, it is assumed that you will be setting up <laughs> if, <laughs> if you are nice supposed spot. If you are doing what you were supposed to be doing, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, uh, so you are you are inside. Um, what is uh, what is your intention from here? Uh, feel free to ask some questions about what's kind of what all's going on and yeah. Um, and, um are uh, there are there any you know, guests here, or is it mostly set up? Uh, there's a few people here early. Um, uh, you can see the, uh, you know, the, the kind of thing where like maybe some friends of, of the no best, um, who are here, who aren't, uh, completely, uh, fully dressed up yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, you know, still need to go do their hair and stuff, um, that are, getting some things together, but, uh, there's a, there's a few guests milling around, but most of what's going on in here is, is servants, um, and things like that. Um, then I'm, I, you know, as I'm surveying the scene here, um, (laughs) on my way to this supposed green room, because, you know, I, I still, I, I still have to perform, you know, (laughs) at least, at least, at least one song. Um, (laughs) I might, you know, see if see if any servants are willing to at least chat for a little bit. I don't know if they're too busy, you know, but there's there's always someone on break somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, just to get a, a a sense of what's going on and see if I can um, try to gather any information about um, this this artifact or the main event. We shall say. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're so you're looking for info about the the main event itself. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um. Great. Uh. So what um. What do you think that role is? Uh, it's gonna be a survey role. Okay. I only have one, but. Survey. You never know. Survey a location or situation. Understand what's going on. Um. Great. So I think. Um. So surveying, um, surveying, I think is is more indicative of of you sort of looking around oh, like, and noticing like, things oh, rather than oh, talking okay. to people. Um, if you. if that's what you want to do, that's that's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that that uh, okay. it's sort of clear what the the potential distinction there is. Um, you can sort. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heritage background.
Yeah, would that uh, yeah, would that be more of a consort? Yeah, I mean if if you're if you're talking to people and and trying to sort of chum chum with them or whatever and gain access uh, to gain to access to resources and information. information. Yeah. Mhm. Okay. Yeah, then uh totally. consort. Consort uh we'll call that um I think yeah, I we'll we'll call this controlled standard. Um, I think here because you're, you know, you're supposed to be here, mm-hmm. so to speak, basically. Yep. Right. And then the the push is you so you take two stress, but it's an extra die. Is that what that is? Yeah. So okay. so you get the choice. So so there are a few options. Uh, in in how to gain extra dice. Um, so you can, uh, Oh, actually, hold on. My, um, my, the special ability that I have is weaving the web, which I feel like I should have been using this the whole time, (laughs) but we just realized that we weren't really using special abilities. Oh yeah, absolutely. You get, this is, I gain one dice to consort when I gather information on a target for a score. Okay. Uh, I don't know that's exactly what this is, but I'll give you okay. that extra one because I probably should have given it to you before. Um, yeah, plus one D to the engagement roll for that operation. Uh, yeah. Um, that's, that's fine. We'll fudge that a little bit. I'll give you, I'll give you an extra die here. Um, so. Is that a, is that a bonus die? Or yeah. So that'll be a bonus die. Um, other than, uh, so other ways you can get, um, yeah, so make sure you're keeping track of your special abilities. Because, like, um, we kind of forgot about this. It's good. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so other than that, you can you can get um, extra extra dice from uh, teamwork things. So if a if a another person is assisting you, uh, the person assisting takes one stress and then gives you an extra die. Um, they they might also suffer consequences for the roll. Um, only one person may assist, uh, which doesn't matter for you because only two of you. Um, but I mean, for for the case of that, you both have to be in the same place, um, right. generally, yeah. or or have a way that you can be doing that assist. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm outside going caca, trying to distract people from I don't know. No. Um, there's also uh, there's also what what we call a setup action. Uh, so this is an action that you're doing to set up another character basically um uh, if you achieve it any team member who follows up gets plus one effect or improved position um so that's a uh thing so um that's another another potential thing there um and then past that yeah you can either uh push yourself or accept a devil's bargain um which is a fun thing that i get to do uh, so yeah, so to push yourself, you take two stress and just get okay. an extra die, um, or uh, you can you can ask for for a devil's bargain, which will be me saying like, okay, I'll give you an extra die for this thing, but <laughs> gotcha. this other thing. Mystery and then af- after you are after you are presented with that choice, you may then decline. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you, you just don't get the other die. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a truth uh, or dare, and then when you don't want to do the dare, you, no, 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 no. I said I said truth. <laughs> okay, All right. Well, I'll just I'll just just take the one bonus die from the uh, from the ability. ability. Yeah. All right. And here we go. Okay, that's a five. Uh, and that was controlled, right? <clears throat> yes, controlled All right. standard. Uh, so you hesitate, withdraw, and try a different approach, or else uh, do it with minor consequence. A minor complication occurs. You have reduced effect. You suffer lesser harm. You end up in a risky position. Um, so yeah, I think I think with this, uh, you. Um, Yeah. So with this, I think mo- the uh, the um, the the servants around um, are uh, making it clear that they don't wish to be bothered <laughs> at yep, this point. Right. You're trying to sort of pry some information out of them, and they're all like, "Look, I gotta, 
I gotta go set this off the dough. turkey out and uh, hang the the flowers mm. in the blue room. Not the flowers <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so, uh, so that is, uh, yeah. So you can withdraw and try a different approach, um, if you would like. All right. Um. So that's that's kind of one of the benefits of of <laughs> being in a more controlled position is that when it doesn't work, it's not always like you die. Um, well, that's nice. <laughs> um. Not Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So if you if you want this information that you're after, um, mm -hmm. you'll have to sort of find another way at okay. it. Um, while you're thinking about that, let's pop yeah. back over to Isol. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so I th yeah, so I think at this point you're, uh, you've kind of jumped in with a group and you are kind of out in the gardens. Um, and there's a, uh, the, the sort of group of servants that you had fallen in with, um, are, are setting out, uh, trays and and putting down tablecloths and and things like that for uh for a section uh out in the in the garden here um and uh there's there's unsheathed uh out here sort of milling around uh keeping an eye on things um and uh yeah i think that's that's basically it what's uh what's your angle here so as I've, you know, wandered into this group, I very smoothly, you know, walk <laughs> over to a, a stack of folding chairs and I pick them up and I start putting them out and <laughs> in a pattern that looks like it, it, it belongs and so forth. And then I, um, I head over and I start arranging the, the, the plates and the little cocktail napkins on the, on the table and. You know, I just generally try to make myself look busy. Mm -hmm. Are you sitting the chairs up facing a wall again? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Corners. <laughs> I know that most people don't want to sit in chairs that way, so I don't set them up that way. But if it was for myself, I certainly would. <laughs> um, and so I, I sort of work my way towards maybe a darker corner of the gardens you know more shadowed and mm -hmm. with with fewer people around and just try to sort of get out from the scrutiny of others and sure. uh take stock and uh examine my surroundings and where i am relative to the building and okay and so i guess i if you just accept my narrative thus, thus far perhaps i'd take a, a survey to see what's Great. What's going on? So what are you um just just to give me an idea what what kinds of things are you looking for here? What's your I, What's I your want objective? To know, my objective is <laughs> to find an opening to scale the building, which I I'm assuming that I'm not going to be able to manage until it's dark. Mm. But I'm just looking for an opportunity or a pathway to at least plan on and also um, figuring out where the weak spots, weak places are for, mm -hmm. um, for all of this unsheathed activity. Sure, sure, sure. Um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's get the survey. You said. I think so. Okay. I think that that's yeah. That sounds good. Uh, let's do risky standard here. All right, and. Um... <clears throat> I guess I'll just go with it. Okay. Yeah, just, just go with it. See what oh. happens. Woo! <laughs> That's great. Um, call you the surveyor <laughs> because you have been surveyed. Um, so I think... Sh sh surely you mean that that was desperate, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so with this, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, with a with a full success on this, I think you're able to uh, to spot. Uh, so you're in this sort of 
uh, gardens at the kind of the side of the house. Um, <clears throat> and you, you know, sort of weave your way through some, some juniper, uh, juniper is like bushes or something, right? Aren't they? They're not like tree trees. There are, are evergreen trees. Oh, they are trees? Have, they, 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 yeah. <clears throat> um, they're not very, they're not necessarily tall trees, though I have okay. seen some like 12 foot junipers. Oh. Um, they're like they have very, trees. very dense, um, like, they don't really grow needles. They grow like scales. Oh, okay. Yeah. We have a, we have an arborist here. Yes. Um, so you've you've sort of found your way into a nice little juniper juniper patch here. Uh, you know, maybe she uh, the the no best like uh, has her own like gin. <laughs> you know hobbyist it distillery lovely. um it does it <laughs> smells so good over here oh you have no idea um and uh so i think you you managed to find um in in these side gardens you managed to find yourself a uh a side uh um like a Hidey hole um no like an actual oh. um uh, like there's a a section of the 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 building that's that juts out from the first floor, um. So it's like a like a an extra like a like a kitchen or something, um. That comes out. So, but there's uh there's like a lattice on one side, um, with a bunch of flowers and whatever. But, um, judging from sitting here, sort of watching, um, the unsheathed. Uh, that are milling around uh, you think that uh, you uh, timing it right could get yourself um, kind of basically up that lattice um, and across the roof and probably get yourself to a second story window or at the very least lay down flat and be out of sight sure <clears throat> um, okay uh are we st are we sticking with me? Uh yeah, let's let's uh let's see what see what happens. All right, can I prowl up the lattice or <laughs> is this finesse? Um I I mean I feel like climbing up a lattice is no big deal. The big deal is staying hidden. Yes, I would agree with that. Um yeah, so let's do that. Um and yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, I'll sort of keep rolling with your with your good success there. So we'll still call this uh, risky standard. Risky standard. Zero bonus. All right. Okay. I'll take it. It's a five. Um, you do, but there's a consequence. You suffer harm. A complication occurs. You have reduced effect, or end up in a desperate position. Um. All right, I think here's what happens. So you get up there, um, you get your way across the lattice. Are you are you trying to get in this window? Are you trying to get in the house here, or are you just trying to? Uh... Well, I mean, I will eventually want to get in the window, but I don't run straight to it. You know, my my plan is to get up, get hidden, and then take stock. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so you get up there, you peek through this window. Um, and inside you see a uh, um, a nice room. It's it's this um, this is big. This is definitely big in that like fantasy minimalism, whatever that means. But like very very <laughs> clean walls, um, like a a nice like stone stone floor or something. Um, very kind of square. Uh, small amounts of, of nice looking furniture. Um, and there's, uh, there's no, hide behind. no one in there. Yeah. So I think you, you are able to kind of crack the window, um, and get inside this room, uh, and, uh, slink behind a, a, uh, little, uh, chaise lounge or something. Um, uh, just as uh, someone walks into uh, the room uh, talking to uh, someone else. So two people um, come walking into this room. Uh, they see me. Uh, they have 
not. <laughs> I think that still tracks with being in desperate position. That's what I'm. That's what I'm sort of putting you in here. Mm-hmm. So you are in a room. Uh, the window sort of clicks shut behind you, <laughs> um, and you are now in a room, and there are people in here. Okay. Um, I position myself either behind or under, whichever is more hidden from the people. Uh, this piece of furniture. Um, like I, I don't, I don't know orientation and all that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. which, whichever position is more hidden. I put myself into that position <laughs> okay. and I wait <laughs> and listen. And I am definitely paying attention to their conversation. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Uh, is that, uh, is that a prowl? Um, it depends what, what's your, what's your objective here, I guess. Is... My objective is to not get caught. <laughs> if not get caught is your objective, uh, then yeah, I think I think that's a a prowl. Okay. Well, I, um, I mean, if that's that's not my job to say, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um. Yes, my objective is to not get caught. Obviously, you know they're talking in my presence. I can't help but overhear. You know whatever they say, I've heard. Sure. It. <laughs> uh, I am now a desperate. So yes, yeah, so prowl. Uh, so desperate. Uh, we'll say desperate standard. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And I am gonna. I. This is a stressful situation. So uh, <laughs> I'm taking too stress to. Do you uh, wanna? Do you wanna take a devil's bargain instead of taking the stress? Um, uh, I can try. I'll and... listen to your proposal okay. if I can take the stress. If I can... <laughs> uh, yes. Let me let me come He's, up with. He was waiting for that one. Let me come yep. up with Someone do here. it. Someone do it. <laughs> <laughs> let me just quick remind myself of some. Drive it like I stole it. That's right. That's right. Listening to directions. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. You know, that usually ends up in crashing and burning, though. <laughs> Spectacularly, though. It's true. It's true. With style and flair. That's right. All right. This is not helpful. <laughs> um, I guess maybe here. Oh, the Devil's Bargain. PCs and Blades are reckless scoundrels. <laughs> PCs and Blades are reckless scoundrels addicted to destructive voices. They don't always act in their own best interests. To reflect this, the GM or any other player uh, can offer you a bonus die if you accept a Devil's Bargain. Common Devil's Bargains include collateral damage, unintended harm, sacrifice coin or an item, betray a friend or loved one, offend or anger a faction, start and or tick a troublesome clock, uh, add heat to the crew from evidence or witness, uh, suffer harm. Um, okay. There's an idea forming in my head. Um, so, uh, let's say this, the devil's bargain will be that, um, I will give you this bonus die, uh, but whatever you're doing here, um, it's going to end up uh, getting you a minus one from a faction. All right, how would that work? Uh, so you'd you'd do the roll and get the uh, the bonus die, um, but then we sort of narrate what's going on and I'll let you know <laughs> which faction it is <laughs> and we'll play that out to, uh, I'm just curious how staying hidden to show how that goes. Um, I have somebody, to figure that you... out yet, but <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. I'll, 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 I'll take it. All right, cool. Here I'll... we go at war with a <laughs> <laughs> Sanctuary. <laughs> Ooh. Four, 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 two. Um, so what do you say that was desperate? Uh, yeah, I took my I took my XP. All right, good, 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 good. Um, 
Uh, okay, so on a 4 to a 5 and a desperate roll, you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer severe harm, a serious complication occurs, you have reduced effect. Um, Alright, so, so here's how this goes. So, they, these two people come in, uh, one of them is a, uh, a human woman, uh, I think you're, I'm going to put you underneath of this, this fun little chaise lounge here. Um, here's my characters. Um, the other is a, uh, a Hawthorne board. Um, and, uh, one of them sits down, uh, the, We'll say the Hothenborn comes in and sits down uh, on the uh, the chaise that you're underneath of. Um, you can see that this person uh, has really just like kind of outrageous shoes on. Um, is what you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as you're as you're sitting here uh, listening, uh as I'm still trying to sort of work this out exactly in my head. <laughs> um, basically what's going on here is uh, this person, uh, this Hothen Boren is uh, one of the, uh, well, I guess it, so what you can tell from the person is that this person is from uh, the society of acceptable losses. Uh, which is a sort of uh, a a faction that operates here out of Elskenweft um, and is basically a group of people trying to become a sort of big fancy secret society <laughs> in in the rich circles, um, and that becomes clear because uh, this person. Uh, which I guess if you're listening to a conversation, you probably catch their names. Um, this is um, Abet Nibet. I'll write it in the chat here. Um, Abet Nibet, uh, the Hothenborn, and the uh, the woman in the room um, is in fact um, Nobes Artiga. And the reason that they are in this room together, um, it becomes clear, is that uh, the um, the society of the society of acceptable losses is trying to woo uh, the nobes uh, to join their cause. Um, this is what you you what you sort of find out here. Um, so. Um, you're, oh, I was reading the wrong one. Severe harm. Serious complication. Um. All right, so I'm just checking through some things in my notes. Um, yeah, so I think what happens here is, uh, this, this Hothenborn, um, Abed Nibet is, uh, trying very hard to, to convince, uh, the, the Nobes Artiga here to, to join their cause. And she, she doesn't seem to be, to be having it, <laughs> um, and uh, Abed Nibet's kind of getting riled up here a little bit. Um, they're they're younger, like like twenties ish. Um, they are uh, male male, by the way, so human male, animal head male. 
Um, and he he's being he's being sort of rebuffed by by the uh, the nobes here and um keeps getting more and more agitated um and eventually uh gets so much so that he he jumps they jump up um and uh They jump up and, and um, you see this happen because as they jump up, the chaise that you're underneath of uh, tips back, um, revealing you underneath of the chaise. Um, and you see him uh, or them uh, pull out a, uh, a knife. And, uh, having been rebuffed, begin to threaten, uh, the Nobes, saying things like, um, if, if you won't join us, uh, then I'll make you join us, or I'll make you regret it, or something like that. Um, and as that happens, uh, the, the Nobes, uh, catches sight of you, uh, as the Shez tips over uh and gives a little bit of a scream <laughs> uh because there is a pocket underneath <laughs> of her chest uh as someone just pulled a knife on her um so the faction that you're losing uh you're going to a minus one with is the uh the side of acceptable losses um because you've uh inadvertently interrupted this little <laughs> thing. Um, so while we figure out uh, what's while or while you figure out what you want to do about that, let's pop over back to <laughs> to Shayla. <laughs> what a position you are in. Woo! Okay, great. There's a pocket in my walk-in. <laughs> a book by Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Uh, if Dr. Oh, Seuss wrote man. tabletop games. Um, yeah, you, you know. Let's sign up. <clears throat> Alright. So, has has time passed here now? Um, if, if you, uh, if you wanted to. I mean, we're... I mean, not, like, yeah, I don't know how long he was out there, so, like, mm -hmm. uh, at least some, some sort of time. You can abstract it, a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so are there, uh... So, it's so uh, you know, I go I go to my green room. I start setting up, kind of doing my thing. Cause I, you know, I want to make it look somewhat good. <laughs> and a chance of performance, always a good time. Um, but is there are are there any like unsheathed coming and going? Is there like anyone that's like standing watch in each room or something like that? Or um, in the room yet? I think there are. F there are fewer inside than there were outside, um, but I think there's still the occasional one walking around. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive it like I stole it. Yeah. Um, so as as I'm as I'm sitting up, I, I see this particular unsheathed who either is standing out, you know, in the room, outside the room, whatever, mm -hmm. or is continuously doing his nice same path back and forth. I see him, and you know, since I've been doing this this bard thing for quite a while, I'm actually pretty good at uh, uh, profiling people. So when I see a certain individual, <laughs> I kind of know, you know, like what what's gonna really get them? What kind of <laughs> what kind of mood will really <laughs> really pull at them, you know, and then and, and just and just resonate with them. And this this particular uh, guy looks like the the sultry kind, you know. <laughs> so. I'm going to see if I can uh, kind of sway him to my side a little bit so that maybe I could potentially chat with him and um, and, and see what's going on. So, you know, I pull out my infamous split elbow <laughs> and for, for a quote unquote warm up, I uh, pull out one of my the most sultry, uh, <laughs> sad, just power ballad, you know, type 
of song that I can muster, you know, just as a warm up. Right. Yeah. yeah, Nothing, nothing too complicated or anything like that, but you know, something that's, that's, that really pulls at you. Mm. And that way to see if I can just, you know, pull him in, get his attention. Just like catch his eyes while you're. Yeah. Kind of like catch him so that, you know, he might potentially come up to me or, you know, I could in passing, you know, so that he was like, oh man, that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of, kind of, kind of start that, make that connection. You know? mm, yeah. I think, uh, I think, yeah, it takes, it takes some time to like that. You're sort of like giving him eyes as you're, as you're playing through some of the stuff mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, after, after once or twice, he like starts catching eyes back with you. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, see, you know, passes <laughs> by, passes by once, uh, just sort of like locking eyes a little bit, and then yeah. passed out of the room, and Can then you pick up this box. It's really, it's really, uh, it's just, I, I'm not strong enough. You know, you look like you look strong enough that you can move my box from here to over there. <laughs> um, uh, so what's uh, what's we should make a roll to see how this goes. Yes. Uh, so what's your what's your objective here, and what are you? Uh... I'm going to so I'm 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 doing a sway. Okay. So I'm trying to, you know, char- charm him mm-hmm. in a way, and try to seduce him in a way to uh, that connect so connect cool. with me on a deeper <laughs> level, you know. <laughs> Just as a warm up. Totally. Just as a warm up. Yeah. Um. All right, so that's going to uh, so uh, that's yeah. So sway, um, are you pushing yourself or? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna push this one. Okay. So I'd have to do two stress. Yep, two stress. Um, and then this is going to be uh, risky limited, um, risky. limited because. Uh, you're doing this directly to unsheathed and they are a good number of tears ahead of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um so, so one bonus. So we'll go yeah, and one bonus die from pushing yourself. Oh boy. I forgot that they were so far above me. <laughs> That's right, here we go. Hey, uh that is a crit. Ooh, what does that mean? That is two so two sixes. Uh, means you, uh, so you do it with increased effect. Ooh. <laughs> um, so you, you got this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I got him. He's crying. He is crying. <laughs> I took him to church. Um, so he's, uh, he, uh, so this is a, uh, I can say this is a barblish. Uh, it sounds like a, a, a man. Um, and uh so he comes over and he's a he's like a he's a stocky guy um you know he's got some he's got some muscles on him um and the i just as a picture i i've been i've been imagining the unsheathed uniforms as again sort of playing off of this like sort of west southwest thing um i don't know exactly what this would look like but my brain tells me that they're like like duster duster uniform uniform dusters dress dusters <laughs> or something um is the the kind of style that i'm that i'm thinking about for this um yeah i don't really know but you know picture i don't know what the, oh, I'm, go- I'm googling this right now a, du- a duster <laughs> I don't know what like, you're a, talking like about. a duster jacket it's like one of those big... but I, yeah no, no i got i i literally googled it because i was like what are you talking about <laughs> i got it now i got it um so think of what a what a dress yeah. uniform duster would look like and that's yeah, totally no, what it is yeah, exactly um that, yeah. <laughs> so uh so he's got that and and he's got uh Barbless have four arms and the antlers and the trunk. Um, and uh, so he comes over and he's like, you need this box moved. Um, mm-hmm. And he picks up the box with just two of his arms Ooh. Um, and, and moves it over. And he's just like, he is locked in on you the whole time. <laughs> yes. So you've yes, got sir. him. You've got him. Where are you going? <laughs> where, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
so you know as as he's talking we do a little we do a little chit chat you know he asks about the music my you know my uh education and music i ask him totally. what kind of music he's into if he plays anything you know just kind of kind of s- s- sweet talking but sitting there like checking your read and like doing that yeah you know, yeah blowing, you know, blowing him... through the the holes in the side <laughs> to you know doing those oboe things let him let him polish the flute you know <laughs> um <laughs> Um. <clears throat> anyways, uh, essentially, I'm taking. I'm trying to take this opportunity with uh, this newfound connection um, <clears throat> to try to find what this uh, what this main event is and mm-hmm. where it might happen. Mm. Who might be involved? Whatever I can get from this uh, from this main event, you know. Um, you want to pick an appropriate tune to play during it exactly exactly you know like i if if i always need to need the experience you know just to envision you know there's a big event like what would the music sound like you know for this for this big event and could it it could always be better embellished with music absolutely Um, so uh, also i may faint and somebody should be there to catch me it's true it's true i usually do faint when the the mall wakes i don't even know i don't even remember what that was but <laughs> the height of this uh this event you know it usually it really overpowers me and, totally totally you know, might might need someone i i might need to stand by someone who could be so strong and and take care of me in case um happens. so let's so let's call this a um because I think this I think this is another role, uh, to to that's what I was, get the yeah, that's what I was to going get the information as, as, as a consort. Um, yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. He's he's a, he's my newfound connection here. Oh yeah. I'm trying to gain access resources. Um. um so would you like uh would you like a devil's bargain? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> um, yeah, a, you know what? What a powerful. Just... Um, we'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, so. Um, I should have that list of things ready. Roll. Okay. Um, just until I get a little more practiced at this one. <laughs> Start and or tick a troublesome clock. Um. Oh no! You know what this is? This will be. This will be. Uh, this will be simple. Um, this is going to, if you take this devil's bargain, um, you will gain, uh, you'll be taking one heat. Um, cause this guy go and remember you. Yeah, <laughs> they usually do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. I'll, I'll take it. All I'll right. It. So, All right, so what did I say? Consort heat. heat. So is this uh, Come sort, risky? Um, so this is, um, I will give you, I will give you risky great on this, um, because because of your your kind of setup on yourself here. What is what is great? Uh, great is your uh, effect. Oh, okay. So instead of standard. Okay, and then the one bonus. And one bonus, yep. Okay. There it is. Uh, that's a six. <laughs> um. Gone <Got> very badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So so you get great effect here. Um. So he's he 
uh, yeah, I mean, he gives you, like, everything he knows about this. So, um, he... Fortunately, he knows nothing. No. Oh, what <laughs> yeah, a right. shame. Which is absolutely nothing. Terrible. He actually um, doesn't even work here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, great. Um, okay, so I'll give you that as well. Okay, so so he 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 just starts kind of spilling a little bit here, um, okay. and he tells you about um, uh, tells you a little bit more about uh, you know kind of some of the things that you heard that that Nobis Artiga, um, she is uh, she's a a, a a bit eccentric. Um, she she fancies herself. Uh, yeah, like we said, she fancies herself as an expert on on cartographer lore, um, and is extremely excited about this this gallery that she's putting on. Um, there's a couple of pieces. Uh, he tells you that it's over in the white room, um, which he he points out to you, um, and you know asks if you want him to draw a map or something. <laughs> um, uh, and says there's a couple items out already. Uh, but the the prize item uh, that's going to be coming uh, to be put into this gallery um, is uh, is something uh, that they uh, that she that he says everyone is is been has been very hush hush about um, but it sounds like it is uh, some kind of cartographer thing. Mm. Um, and part of this, uh, being the centerpiece of this gallery, um, uh, he says that the Nobes has made some comments about this thing, um, somehow being activated, uh, or something like oh. that at midnight, uh -oh. um, as, as this big sort of finale moment of the, of the gallery here. Um, I think he also, uh, because of the great effect here, um, I think he also, uh, in, in, in like an offhanded comment, uh, makes some mention of, um, uh, of major, uh, Kirik. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kyrick, yeah. <laughs> I should know these names. <laughs> guys know him. Notes, you know so. him better than i do um it makes some mention of of major kirik um and uh basically that that gives you enough information that you know uh where her her room is the room that she's she's been staying okay. in um so do you have any thanks my guy yeah uh, do you have any like follow-up questions or anything I know that's technically something I should be doing on an information okay. information role, but this is, is this does, is kind of an information role. Yeah. Does the, um does he know like where where this activation event event will happen? Uh, in the gallery. In the gallery. Yeah. And that's it, that's different from the white room. No, the 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 gallery is in the white room. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So in the white room. Um, and, and then Akirik is essentially in charge of this. Um, he, yeah, I think, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to, cause, cause your, your, your question was about the, like the gallery and stuff. So I don't want to yeah, yeah. bleed yeah, too no, much into fair. Okay. Um, unless, unless, unless you're asking him specific, unless you're pressing him to ask, uh, specifically about Kirik and stuff. No, that's all right. I don't want to, I don't want to push your, hard. push your luck. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so he knows, so there are, there are items already in this white room. However, this prize item is not there yet. Correct. That is from from what you had heard. That's that's the item that supposedly Kirik will be leaving to go facilitate the transport of to arrive back here by midnight 
to be name. to be part of this big display. Hmm. Overarching meta question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the cartographers. <laughs> yes. What's that? Who? <laughs> <laughs> The the Cancrozans cartographers are. Um, let's see if I have anything written down. So it's just about to go look. Um, in some of my other, they wouldn't be. I I, I don't think I have no, anything. You don't have them on there. In I in mean, any I, of these the, notes. I what what I have gathered is they're somewhat of like a, I don't know, a progenitor, civilization or something. There there's some, formerly powerful civilization that no longer exists but left behind relics correct yeah so basically um basically they are they are this ancient uh race of uh something or others uh with you know supposedly like godlike powers um it's what um the the knights of the holy ground are wildly concerned uh with the cartographers that's like their whole thing is they're like the wildly ones that are... concerned with destroying yes or yes <laughs> um destruction as being the yeah, they they you know they're the ones that are like you know the cartographers are the true threat of of no, well not humanity because they're more than humans but right whatever the equivalent of that is um and no one else is watching out for them and we're the only ones that are doing it and we're you know uh us um uh man i wish i had a uh artifacts of theirs are known and exist and yes are in in the public mind um yeah not necessarily pr- like very presently um there have been there have been rumors of of some wild uh things coming from over to jethway um about uh, you know, kind of cartographer-shaped whispers, um, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and uh, I, you've probably, being Bohemians, you've probably heard about this enormous, like, city-sized uh, skyship that's appeared relatively recently um, over there and has been involved. Um, that's that's our, our main game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um and uh, people Recently are talking. Burned a third of uh, yeah. their shoulder to the uh-huh. ground. Uh, that's the thing that <laughs> happened, um, and uh, stuff like that. So people people are sort of whispering cartographer around some of that stuff, um, and the the information that uh, that whole job that uh, Helbora went on um, back a couple, you know, however many years ago it was. Uh, that she went and got captured by the knights. Um, the reason she went in is because uh, the knights had gained access to some kind of relic and were doing something with it. Um, and was she was trying to find out. She and her crew were trying to find out what was up. Um, and that's when she went in, got captured, and came out not the same. <laughs> or interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Back to the action. Um, I was gonna say I think so. So because my uh, devil's bargain is that I raised suspicion. Well, so not necessarily you raised suspicion, but you oh. you it's it's uh, mechanically speaking, we you gained heat, um, oh. basically. So it's okay. yeah, just that that's like a, a a generic thing in terms of like there being evidence left behind and and whatnot, but. Oh, um, okay. That you, yeah. So that's not our suspicion. Did you say that was our suspicion? So that's clock? a that's a separate thing from the suspicion oh, clock. Yes. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, I guess my last really question would be like, well, you know, it it would it wouldn't be easy to you know transport something like that. I'd uh, imagine there's a lot of people uh, going to get it. <laughs> 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 and uh kind of just see if i can get any small details about a, a route or that sounds valuable someone as big and strong as you must <laughs> surely be in charge of transport there you go. um so is this that, this i think i think this is a is it another role a separate line of questioning so i i would say that this is probably a different role okay. um 
uh, if that's what you want. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I do think this, this is going to be, uh, well, you've got your great effect. So I think this will balance back out to being standard effect. Yeah. Um, because this, this is the kind of thing that's like, you know, yeah, you've got him, but this is maybe a tiny bit suspicious to be poking mm-hmm. around this. <laughs> that's, that's what I was asking. That's why I thought we were getting a, a tick on our suspicious counter. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask this question that, that raises that suspicion. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll roll again and consort again and see what happens. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to do my, I'm just going to do my two. Okay. I think what I just say, consort. So you said so. We'll do uh, it, we'll do risky risky standard, stuff? yeah. Standard, okay. And no bonus. Four. Okay, so that's a four. Um. Yeah. So here, so here, I think. Uh. So you. Uh. So you're looking for information about the. Uh, the transportation. Correct. Um, so I think he, uh, you, he's, I think what happens is he's still a little bit on, on the, the kind of the high of, of <laughs> this, this, you know, thing you've got going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, Our great connection. And, and starts like spilling, uh, a little bit more than he should, should. Um, so he lets you know uh, that yes, there are um, unsheathed uh, responsible for moving this thing, um, but it's it's a very like particular uh, thing. They are, um, you know, he makes some mention about um, uh, Nobis Artiga being. Uh, super paranoid and uh this is kind of the kind of thing that she's uh uh she can be good at in terms of like making things disappear um and that kind of stuff and so the the route it's going on uh there do, there's a lot of work going into it um to make it look inconspicuous mm. so yes there are unsheathed watching it um but they're uh they're watching it from uh you know from uh from nearby not like in a giant armored car marching down right. the street okay. um and uh yeah i think you i think you can also get that that um the plan is to have um major Kirik to be uh kind of feigning a uh normal patrol pattern in a little sky boat Mm -hmm. um but is is definitely going to be kind of helicoptering that watching it um and then he realizes that he should have he said more than he (laughs) should have (laughs) um so i am going to uh tick that clock again the unsheathed suspicion um and and he is going to uh kind of come to a little bit <laughs> um and he's gonna um uh, <clears throat> i uh i should get back to work <laughs> mm-hmm. and shuffles out <laughs> uh let's go back to Issel. so what's and uh, before we do let's take a brief three minute pause three minute pause yeah, sure three minute i love it all righty uh, 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 uh. BRB. All right. Oh. Let's go back to our this. We'll be back.
And we're back. Um, hey. All right, Isil, what's up? <laughs> all right. What's so up? I... <laughs> <laughs> I very, very quickly, you know, on, on my toes, though I'm actually on my stomach, um, <laughs> I give a, a start as a, oh, 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 and, and uh, act as though I had been sleeping <laughs> underneath the couch, like, you know, skiving, <laughs> attempting to get out of work, and, um, and, uh, act very disoriented and oh uh, 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 and then I hmm, do I run or do I face justice um, I, I stand up <laughs> very slowly and and um, hang hang my head in shame and say I am sorry uh, Novus I was asleep <laughs> <laughs> and the Grammy goes to <laughs> Well, so I think I think it is it is important to note uh that um Abet Nibet knows who you are. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh right, because 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 we know that you've dealt with the Society of Acceptable Losses because you bargained with them but, to get your territory. But, but didn't we deal with underlings <laughs> <laughs> i mean y y potentially but i think okay it's um because th the other reason that i say that is because uh because it doesn't make sense to lose faction right. status with them if they don't know who you are <laughs> um yeah. so i think i think that should be should be part of this um okay to be true um, to that negative consequence let me uh let me think so about if that if that more. affects what you're what you're doing here, <laughs> because you know maybe he doesn't want to. I I, I don't know would it, would, would it. I mean he is he has he is unhappy with you. <laughs> yeah, but does he have any reason to reveal me in particular? Or does he have any reason to not reveal me? Um, I mean, I mean that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> To All right, so so that reveal. is not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Record scratch. Um, I that was what I thought about doing, but then it <laughs> occurred to me. Oh wait. Um, I. I. Dash for the window. I dive through it, breaking the glass. Ooh. And I, you know, come to an immediate stop and dive to the right and jump as though I'm jumping off the roof. But instead, once I'm out of sight, I throw my light climbing gear, grappling hook up onto the roof and go up instead and very quickly pull the rope up behind me so that when they stick their heads out the window, I've disappeared. And they Ooh. think that I've dived down, but really sure. I'm not. Okay. Uh, so what, uh, so what kind of role is that? Um, I'm using my light climbing gear, by the way. Huh? So I'm clicking Good. That. Mark that. Um. So, like, feet, feet of athletics doesn't really fit any of these, does it? Like, there's nothing that's specifically um, I think... acrobatics it's closest to finesse probably yeah i think that sounds right is... <laughs> oh we're right there um i will consider consider a devil's bargain okay will you now <laughs> consider i'm not <laughs> promising anything <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got a taste. Now we're obsessed. I know. See, the devil's lettuce. The de <laughs> <laughs> um, let me. I'm just look at. I guess there's a whole section here that's more detailed. Oh, I thought there was on the action ratings to see if um, if that sounds right for. Let's 
This, by the way, is addressing a challenge with evasion. I'll just point that out. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll check back with that kind of stuff at the end. Um, mm -hmm. When you finesse, you employ dexterous manipulation or subtle misdirection. Um, hmm. I mean... It's not hunt, study, survey, or tinker. Yeah. It's not attune, command, con consort, or sway. It's not wreck or skirmish. I suppose it could be wreck because I jumped through a window, but that's <laughs> and that's side, you know. Thing. Right. Um. Uh, I I mean I I could see I could see a case for for that. Um. For it being so prowl. Pr yeah. When you prowl, you traverse skillfully and quietly. Um. Because uh, I would love to make this a prowl. If that's not yeah. stretching things. Prowl about unseen and traverse obstacles, climb, swim, jump, run, and tumble. So, Yeah, it, it's only the unseen, at least at the beginning, that doesn't really apply. Right. Um, although I do eventually make myself unseen. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. we'll call it a prowl. Let's call it a prowl. Um, um, would you still like to consider a devil's bargain? I would still like to consider a devil's <laughs> bargain. Mm, right. Because I need to get out of this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Pronto. Um, I really need to mark this, don't I? Um, and remember where it is. It is in the action roll section. Here it is. I'm gonna mark this. Um, Um, I will say, um, here, okay, so the devil's bargain is, um, everything goes the way you said, except instead of being able to pull up your climbing gear, uh, it drops. So you get to use it here, but you don't get to use it again. Mm. <laughs> good old will one it, and done. It so it'll still my, it'll my still only concern is that so so my my deception will work your deception will work okay it won't be like oh look there's climbing gear clearly he went up <laughs> your, your no hook breaks. it fell okay. it fell into a juniper <laughs> okay all right I will. I am willing to lose my climbing gear. All right. In this, so I will take that devil's bargain. Okay. So here is a prowl. Uh, my position is desperate. I assume this is desperate. Yep. Um, and I'm going to take an XP. Uh, the effect. Uh, this will be standard. Standard, and I get a bonus. Submit. All not, right. Not a crit, but, not a crit, a but that's a six. So we'll take yep. that. Awesome. Um, all right. So so you do that. Um, you watch them uh, poke their heads out the window uh, very confusedly um, uh, uh, from, you know, watching from the safety of up on the roof. Um, and they are looking for you. You can see unsheathed start to scramble around um, down in the gardens below you. Um, and you are up on the roof, hidden. um, hidden. <laughs> uh, so what's, uh, what's your next move? Uh, all right. So I am on a roof. Is the roof flat? Is it peaked? Are there dormers? Uh, um, what? I'm going to call this a flat roof. All right. Is there roof access? Uh, Sure. Do I have to look around to find that out? <laughs> um, no, I. I mean, okay. it's. I don't like. I don't think you need to roll to like look around on a roof to see if there's. Roof okay. It, so, so is it like there, there's there's a door and stairs are behind the door, or is it like there's a a, a hatch? Or oh, a, actually, you know what? What does let's, roof access look like? Let's do this. Um, I'm gonna roll a uh, fortune dice. To find out, uh, let's do. I'll roll two, two, two d six. Um, I don't know. That seems right. 
that's a two and a wow that's really hard to read um <laughs> so it's a two and a three so uh so no there is no roof access um not one you can easily get to you'll have to you'll have to like climb down uh through a window or something mm-hmm Without my climbing gear. <laughs> yes, it was a good devil's bargain. Uh-huh. <laughs> However, I, I am highly athletic and perfectly capable. This of is from my fingers. this is true. <laughs> <Finger. clears throat> All right. Well, um, I prowl along. Or, or I'm sorry, that is the wrong word. <laughs> I, I move along the the <laughs> perimeter of the building. You know, with an ear out um, trying to find the corner of the house, the area of the house that seems the quietest mm-hmm. up here on the top floor, which is above the third or above the second. Um, it depends. It depends where I think like there's areas. Uh, I, yeah. I think the part that you're on is up above the, the third, the third floor. Okay. Here. So I'm looking for the quietest, the quietest corner, or the quietest area. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you'll looking for, looking for empty, empty rooms as best I can tell from my vantage. Sure. Um, why don't you? Uh, yeah. Let's let's do uh, let's do a roll from this. Um, for, for looking while you're in hiding, we'll call this, uh, we'll call this controlled. Um, okay, but, um, is this, is this, hmm, is this survey or is this prowl? Uh, what do you think? I think I'm well hidden and I don't, and I don't think it takes particular skill to not be seen on a roof when nobody's looking. Yeah, sure. Um, unfortunately, you know. I, I would like to call this a prowl, but I think that that's a stretch. I think that this is a survey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, the prowl would be a, like a lesser effect. Um, yeah. So survey, um, but this is I, I'm I'll I'll give you the controlled here. So. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So so even if it goes but, terribly, it's not it's not 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 that bad. Mm-hmm. And the effect is standard. Yeah, we'll go or... we'll go uh, controlled standard. Yeah. All right, and I am pushing myself. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to take some stress for this. Uh, I feel like it's well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, that's a five. Uh, is it resolved to direct merge? Um. Okay. So what happens is. Uh, you find your way out onto a uh, sort of a side, like a side wing um, of the building, basically, um, and you um, you find a uh, like a balcony, basically, mm-hmm. um, and out on the balcony is. Uh, is some 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 furniture and stuff. So this is like a, uh, a like a the balcony from a a like a room like a like a guest wing room or whatever, um, and it becomes uh it becomes you can hear you can hear someone from inside the room, uh, but you can't get a good look at. Um, at what's in there. Um, but I think it looks like this is your like your best option, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can you can kind of push push on here with a little bit of riskier position, um, or you can try something else. All right. Uh, I I accept this as my as a good option. Uh, I'm at least intrigued. If mm-hmm. Nothing else. Um. Mm-hmm. All right, so I go and I I poke my head over because, you know, I've determined that it's quiet. There's somebody in the room, but the general area seems to be quite dead. 
Um, so I poke my head over and I, I take stock of the door, which has windows, I assume. Or, uh, or sure. Has glass. Yeah. I think a lot of this is is like nicely, nicely windowed. Mm -hmm. So um, I see the railing of this balcony is like it, it obviously attaches directly to a wall. Not, yeah, I'm. I'm not to a window. So, if I were to drop myself down onto the railing directly next to the wall, mm -hmm. I would not be in view of anybody inside, and I see that there's nobody on the balcony. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm imagining this as being um, again sort of thinking along those like uh, sort of more modern Greek, um, uh, like Mediterranean kind of style that the. Uh, the, the balcony is surrounded by like its own little low wall. So it's not like a railing. It's just like a little, little low wall kind of a thing. Um, so it's all pretty, uh, pretty plain or whatever, but, but so, but yes, your, your little maneuver here, I think is, is good. Okay. Um, and so this is going to be a, a if, if it is a roll, I would assume that it would be a prowl roll, me dropping down. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be unnoticed. That sounds good. And then, um, yeah. So following, following from what we were, we were going on this, this would be risky, um, uh, as opposed to being controlled. Um, so this, uh, yeah, so this would be a risky standard. All right. There's a six. Um, so you get down here, um, uh, and you're able to get down without having, um, any, making any the, noise. Making any noise. The person inside you noticing it all. Um, and uh, you you try looking through the windows to see who's in here. Um, and the light is pretty low. Um, and you know you definitely heard some noise. But at, at first look in there, you can't, you can't see anybody. And then you realize the reason you can't see anybody in there is because the person in there is rather short. And you realize that the person in this guest wing room is none other than Major Kirik. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's jump over to Chela. <laughs> I need more time. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of like things that I would be doing here. Um, uh, I mean, this this is uh, I'll take this this uh, short little opportunity to just remind us of our um, objectives. Yep. Um, just to make sure we're, you know, sort of giving. So you're supposed to infiltrate the gathering, which you've done. Um, mm -hmm. Obtain the travel route plans for Major Kirik is your other main objective. Mm -hmm. uh, then your two optional objectives are to detain or delay Major Kirik. Uh, and then also to gain any further uh, possible intel on the artifact. And then finally, uh, to get out and hand off the plans and information to a Bohemian runner. So I feel like we have gathered some additional information about the artifact. Sure. Um, well, well, I don't have that information. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. But, but you, you, as a unit. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as a unit, we have. Uh, so we're in. We don't have the plans. We haven't handed it off. We haven't detained Kirik, but we mm -hmm. know a little bit about what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know a little bit about the travel route, not like the specifics of the travel route at this point. Right, because um, it's it's in a skyboat. Correct. Well, she's helicoptering, but oh, oh yeah, right. Okay. She's she's f uh, the unsheathed are following the route from afar, so we don't know exactly what who or what there. it is being transported in. Um. I think so. My my the two things that I wrote down, like my next objectives, mm -hmm. are to uh, one steal tips from Althus's jar because <laughs> um, it's really it's really important that he can't win this competition. Okay. Oh, like, I will say I will say uh, on on the way out, I think uh, Mr. Marblish Man <laughs> drops a couple coins in your in your tip jar. Aww. Well, I'm, I ha I won't be playing this whole time. So as a way to as a way to <laughs> extricate himself. <laughs> as they do. Um, but obviously, my objective now is more or less to to find Isil in 
you know, at least give him the intel that I got. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, try to try to locate Kirik if if I can. <clears throat> but that's not necessarily my speciality. Um Maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll just take a a, a, a saunter mm -hmm. around kind of like the rooms, the white room particularly, mm -hmm. the gallery, um, <clears throat> see if I can locate the Nobes or Kirik or any of these uh these, these targets. Mm -hmm. So I think I might just do a saunter and just uh do a, a survey. A survey, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> We'll just we'll just go for it. I only have um, one. I have a devil's bargain if you would like one. Yeah, let's let's hear it, devil. Um <laughs> <laughs> Your devil's bargain is that uh you will uh take a minus one to the Silicon Song Camerata. Um because someone will see you away from your post <laughs> and inform Alphys. <laughs> worth it <laughs> i don't want to work with them any anymore anyways <laughs> worst party ever earn that bridge yeah i'll burn it I'll, i will i'll burn it i'll burn that bridge i love it wow these devil's and parties are so fun and then i'll steal his tip jar <laughs> oh right. by the way that that um the devil's bargain for me where i lost uh <laughs> lost faction with uh, the people people mm -hmm. um that's for the crew not me correct uh correct okay okay gotcha. uh, all so, of I, yeah all of this is I'm, is affecting the crew i'm gonna put that in the note um um because you're you know you're acting as a um uh yeah, you're you're recognized as an agent of this group, and so your your actions individually yep. are reflective on the group as a whole. <coughs> Negative one to society noted. Um, I also am am, am tracking all of this in the uh, the faction list as well. Okay. Mm, okay. So if you ever want to check on your statuses with any factions, you can look in there. All right. Okay, so what did I just say? A survey. Okay, so I got only got one. So what? And is, then what a is this one done? one bonus die. Um, yeah. we'll call this uh, we'll do risky standard. Risky standard. Standard plus one die. Hey, oh. there's six. Oh. Um, okay, so so from this as you're sauntering around, um, uh, so you're looking for. Uh, yeah, so I think one, uh, you managed to catch, uh, uh, some, some noise, <laughs> uh, that perhaps might sound like, uh, you know, the shattering of a window, um, <laughs> <laughs> the screaming of a woman, <laughs> um, and so from some of that, I think there's, there's someone that goes running, um, and at this point, um, it's getting close to dusk. Uh, we'll say so more people, uh, noble people are, are starting to show up, um, uh, all that kind of stuff just to, just to, uh, f fill that in. Um, and you're, you know, the, the dread is continuing to build internally. Um, and you can see, uh, particularly on like some of the servants, you can see it, you know, also sort of little, little twinges of that that you can see it, um. <clears throat> affecting some of them um but uh, so you're able to uh you're able to to pinpoint the location of of the uh the nobes uh from from these noises um and i think uh with some of that as you're going around i think you can maybe see a uh like an unsheath or two sort of like rush off um well not rush but like you know walk Hurry with please. walk with, with purpose yeah, there you go. um uh yeah. towards uh a wing uh and you know you hear some mention of of major Kirk. so uh so you 
basically know where where each of them uh, are. Uh, what would you like to do? Good question. Um, can, can you come back to me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, if Isil has ideas, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I was kind of, I guess, I was kind of giving you the opportunity. If, if you were in, oh, interested gotcha. in like heading up or over towards uh, Major Kirik, I was, I was uh, uh, leaving the door open for the possibility of of both of you sort of getting there at the I same gotcha. time, kind of a thing. Um, but if that's not, um, if that's not what you're interested in doing right now, then that is totally fine. Um, that's that's just what I was. Um, leaving open there. Yeah, yeah. I'll go, I'll go towards the noise in case in case uh my buddy here needs some help. Um, so you're so you're heading towards right. that, towards towards to that. Help. heading yeah. towards towards towards, Kyrick. towards that wing. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. So. Um. Uh, how how are you how are you getting there? Because I think there's yeah, there's no, a point that's, that's... there's a point at which you leave the uh you know kind of party grounds. It's that point in the right. spy movie where you're like you know <laughs> kind of get past, heading past heading past down the, the stairs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. So so there's there's a point at which you become more conspicuous, being mm -hmm. uh, sort of wandering around in this part of the of mm. the manor. Well, then, under my items here, mm -hmm. I have a fine cover identity. Okay. What, what does that mean? Um, See, so that's one of your special ones, right? Oh, is that listed in my the player book here? Uh, Probably. I can, I can find it quick and read it to you. Somewhere. Spider. Uh, fine cover identity, uh, paperwork, planted stories and rumors and false relationships sufficient to pass as a different person. Oh, so that's not, oh, okay. Okay. Doesn't really sound like a disguise. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> mm. Or like, or like something I mean... that would change what I look like essentially. Yeah. I, I think if, if that's what you're. If that's what you're going for, you know what? No, I got a better idea. Okay. Well, kind of, maybe <laughs> <laughs> this could go downhill real fast. So I also have a nice fine bottle of whiskey. You do yeah. have a fine bottle of whiskey. <laughs> a rare distillation from your personal collection. Oh wait, yes. uh, yeah. is this something that was left on you when you were patted down, or is this something that Issel has? Uh, it's a... I could, if you're going with fine bottle whiskey, I could conceivably see this as being something that was left on you. Yeah, I mean, why would I? <clears throat> why would <laughs> hand off my bottle, bro? <laughs> I know um... better than to lift her whiskey. <laughs> not, not the fine bottle of whiskey. Come on. So, so yeah, if if it is something I could still have on me, I would sure prefer that. Well, we'll see. So. <clears throat> I'm trying to, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm making my way over to that wing. I obviously realize we've, uh, we've raised some suspicion. <laughs> A little as, bit. As we've gone, but, you know, I'm, I'm away from my, uh, from the barblish, mm -hmm. uh, unsheathed. So I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that I won't be running into him anytime soon. <clears throat> And uh, as I'm going down the this wing towards all the noises, which could potentially be Issel, uh, some unsheathed are starting to come towards me. So uh, I pull out one of my most famous tricks, <laughs> and that's the uh, the drunken girl play. <laughs> right, out, right out of the book. So I pull out my bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <clears throat> I start my stumble. You quickly pour half of it into a potted plant. <laughs> exactly. Pour it all over my face, you know, so that you smell like it. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and and you know you start you start playing that up a little bit and you know <laughs> I got a girl a girl's really gotta go I'm, I just I just do you want me to pee right here I will pee right here if that's where you want I'm just trying to get to the bathroom let me just let me go to the bathroom listen you know you do that and you threaten to just pee on them right then and there and you know <laughs> Males, no matter what species, they don't they don't like that. You know, they just get embarrassed and they don't want to deal with the situation. You know, uh, if you have to, you throw in the time of the month as well. You know, you <laughs> stop asking questions altogether. All right. So as I am kind of uh, stumbling my way through them, I might even, you know, kind of shove the bottle of whiskey into one of those hands and say, this, this is for you. If you just keep walking, I'll find the bathroom. You get the whiskey, okay? I'm overserved anyways. All right. So, what kind of role is this? Um, <laughs> I think this is a this is a finesse role. Uh here. finesse. Okay. Is it? Uh, hold on. I I left my page. Let okay. Me, let me go back. Um, because isn't, isn't a finesse also like a uh, fine finesse an item from someone's pocket employs subtle misdirection or sleight of hand. I think when they're talking about sleight of hand, yeah, of hand, but th I think that's, that's more that. of a of a of a like magician misdirection kind of a thing. Ah, uh, I got you. Okay. Um, I think you're probably you somewhere in the like, like the consort sway territory, depending way. upon how yeah. you want to play it. Yeah. Uh, sway someone with charm, logic, deception, disguise, or bluff. Is sway. I mean, it's a bluff. Let's change let's attitudes or behavior with manipulation <laughs> or seduction. It's a bluff. Come on. Yeah. No. I did. Girls get out of uh, speeding tickets all the time because they <laughs> bluff about having to pee. It's a com. It's a very common one. <laughs> um. Oh, great. That that sound good? That, that sounds good. Sway. Um, so do sway, uh, because you're using your fine bottle of whiskey, go ahead and mark that. Oh, yeah. Um, and the, uh, the fine means you will get, well, again, you're dealing directly with unsheathed. Um, <laughs> so I will, I will give you, uh, the, cause generally a, a fine item brings mm -hmm. the, the effect up. A notch. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay. so I think I think you'll even back out too. So dealing with the unsheathed is gonna would bring you down to limited, uh, mm -hmm. but giving you adding the bottle the fine bottle of whiskey will bring you back up to standard. Okay, I got you. Okay. Um, so we'll go. <clears throat> risky. Yeah. Risky. We'll start okay. risky. Maybe you'll get desperate soon, but. Um, We'll start risky standard, um, so, and what, so what happens if your stress risky bar whiskey. goes all the way all the way up? Um, so if your stress bar goes all the way up, uh, you uh, you gain a trauma. Trauma, yeah, I believe. Okay, Let me, I can find stress and trauma. Uh, when a PC marks their last stress box, they suffer a level of trauma. When you take trauma, circle one of your trauma conditions, like cold, reckless, unstable, etc. They're all described on the next page. Uh, when you suffer trauma, you're taken out of action. You're left for dead or otherwise dropped out of the current conflict, only to come back later shaken and drained. Uh, when you return, you have zero stress and your uh, vice has been set aside for next downtime. Uh, trauma conditions are permanent. Your character requires the new personality quirk indicated by the condition and can earn XP by using it to cause trouble. Uh, when you mark your fourth trauma condition, your character cannot continue as a daring scoundrel. You must retire to them to a different life or send them to prison to take the fall for the crew's wanted level. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Um, I, uh, I can give you a pretty simple devil's bargain here. Uh, we can take another uh, tick on that clock for an extra die. Oh, boy. So you'll be up to three out of four for the suspicion. I know, we're, we're pushing on the suspicion here. Mm. 
so let me ask mm -hmm. if we if we go up to four suspicion does that carry over for tomorrow's group the, the other second half of our hmm. mission that's a good question um i don't no i don't think so um it seems to me that this is suspicion of us at this party yes gotcha. yes okay because I, mean, I was like, well, yeah, that's a good way to say we're it. gonna be we're gonna be real suspicious real real soon, anyways. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think I'm just I'm gonna take the stress hit. Okay. So I'm gonna take two stress. Take those two stress to push yourself. Yep. You just just pouring it on here. Yeah, I'm just really. I, if there was one time for the drunk girl playbook to work, it is this time. So would you say risky? Uh risky standard, yeah. Risky standard, and then bonus one. All right, okay. that's a five. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer harm. A complication <laughs> occurs. You have reduced effect. You end up in a desperate position. Um, yeah, so here's what happens. Um, so you're able to kind of get in, f like, pa past them. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're able to sort of get into the the area you're you're looking at um um uh, let me look up one thing here Such a cliffhanger. Yeah, uh, yeah, what's sorry. Gonna uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so standard complications. So, <clears throat> so you get past them, uh, cause that's what you're trying to do. Um, but, uh, the, uh, a standard complication will tick, uh, twice on this clock. So that fills up this clock, uh, and they, uh, they start coming after you saying, excuse me, you stop right there. Well, that didn't um, work very well. Now did it? But but you you are, uh, but yeah. I want to make sure you have the the success part of this partial success. Um, uh, so I'm I'm giving you like a head start on them basically. Okay. Uh, because I don't want to. Yeah, I want to make sure that that's that's honest to you still having a partial success. Okay. So I like turned a corner. Yeah, that's a, that's when a good way. That's yeah. Ex that's a great way to to think of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I think that uh prob probably puts you in a desperate position here as well. I, uh, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, let's take another step here with you before we jump back to Isil. Yeah. Um. Well, unless do you do you have anything uh, off the bat here? Um. Th well, the so the only thing I could think of, I don't even know if this is if this would be a finesse type of thing because <laughs> I'm thinking about the subtle mis misdirection or sleight of hand mm -hmm. thing. It, but apparently, I don't understand that. But anyways, <laughs> so 
So if I, you know, I turn the corner and all of a sudden I hear them yelling at me, you know, I kind of come to a, a little bit of a split. Okay. So, you, uh, you know, there's kind of like the main hallway and like a secondary, uh, you know, I, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. But, um, so I, uh, take off one of my shoes. Cause you know, when you're running, your shoes might come off and I just throw it down the one hallway that I'm not going to go down. <laughs> I go off the other hallway. Um, hoping that they will be like, she went this way. She lost her shoe this way. Maybe they're dumb enough. I don't know. <laughs> um, That's good. I Yeah. I think... Yeah. Is that, is that a misdirection sleight of hand thing? I think that's, that's, uh, that's fair. Um, I think a, uh, I think Sway might be potentially a better option, uh, because you're Sway someone with term, uh, logic deception. Okay. Disguise or bluff. Um, I mean, I guess you have, I mean, either way, they're both, two either way, they're both two. Way. Um, although this is a desperate, so whichever one you pick, you'll get a experience point in. Oh. <laughs> so I guess that has, um, I think the, <laughs> the, the other difference here is, is kind of how, uh, you know, how the camera sees this, so to speak. Like, I think finesse, finesse would be the kind of thing where you're, uh, like it's a really specific like way that you're tossing the shoe, um, because because fin- <laughs> finesse, uh, uh, I think mostly finesse is dealing with like dexterity kind of things. Okay. Um, Physical feet. Fi- yeah, I got you. like I got you. Okay. That's so. Um, so if you're you know if the camera sees you like. The, if the shot is like a tight shot on your hand as you sort of do this really precise like flick in the way that you throw okay. the shoe. You, um, you throw it like a bottle flip so that, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, it does exactly. a spin and lands exactly flat on the ground. <laughs> boom, and sounds like a footstep. You there say, you go. Oh no, my shoe! As you run off. Um, yeah, so either way, um, either way, I think this is going to be desperate limited. Okay. Um, because again, we're going we're going up against unsheathed here. Um, yep. And and whatnot, but A so classic. choose um, your choose your poison here. I guess we'll do we'll do, we'll do a sway that I, I threw my shoe down one hallway and kind of threw my threw my voice a little bit. Mm, yeah, that's so, good. Oh, oh no, my oh no, my shoe. <laughs> um, I have a devil's bargain if you want one. I I, I will listen to your bargain. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, this is going to be another heat, uh, because you're you're, I mean, for one, you're leaving evidence behind. True. And so this is this is someone recognizing your shoe. This is someone Cinderellaing you. <laughs> All right, so what? Uh, so hold on. Let me the see. barblish picks up your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, this was her shoe. Right? <laughs> I spent so it was meant to be. It. Yeah, it was meant to be. Oh, uh, good lord. <laughs> so uh, hold on, let me re- let me review this heat thing. Uh, so heat is the score. Yeah, so so after this mission is over, you'll get a heat. You'll get heat added based on basically how quiet or loud this mission as a whole was. Mm-hmm. Um, and once your heat maxes out, you gain a wanted level, um, and that affects some things. Uh, your heat level okay. also what's... affects uh, some downtime stuff, and and okay. what's the was the max level six for heat? Uh, one, two, or... three. I think it's a nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Nine. I was just looking at the uh, the heat section. Yeah. So that's. Oh, so you you have a total of nine slots of heat, but I think the 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 loudest uh, oh, mission will give you six oh, okay. heat, basically. Okay. Oh, I got you. Um, which so far this I'm, is this is not this is this is. We're already at, We already have one. So this will be we already two. have one, so this would be a second. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Good deal. 
right. What'd you say? Good deal. <laughs> and this is a desperate roll, so. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll You're going to take it. it? All right. Yeah. Let me say sway. So you said desperate limited? Desperate limited. And then bonus one. Multiple sixes, multiple sixes, multiple let's sixes. Let's go, let's go, sixes. let's go, let's go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so on a desperate four or five, you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer severe harm. A serious complication occurs. Uh, you have reduced effect. Uh, so. I swear to God, if I step on a nail, I get <laughs> tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you do it, which means you've thrown these guys off. But um, okay, a serious a serious complication. Uh, yeah. So I think you're. Your, uh, hmm, I'm trying to forget because it's one of the things. One of the things you're supposed to do as a GM is you're not supposed to make the players look stupid. <laughs> um, which I think is a good. It's a good. It's a good reminder that like when you fail, it's not that you're failing because you're an idiot. <laughs> it's that you're failing because of circumstances and you know that there's it's okay. you can tell me i went the wrong way it's so okay. so like yeah, anyway I, I, how about i propose this and you see what you think of it um so you get away from uh those two you've thrown them off your trail so they're not mm -hmm. tailing you um but in your haste to to go the other direction um you uh you walk into or you 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 know you duck into a room and close the door um, and find that you are in Major Kirik's room and she's staring right at you. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> I guess the drunk girl playbook will work again on this one. Huh? <laughs> um, and she looks right at you and uh, <laughs> she's like, um, oh, let me check if I have anything. What, uh, what kind of person do you think Major Kirik is, Colin? This is your contact or your rival, uh, Major, right? Major Kirik is a, uh, something of a grouch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's she's you know she's oh how do I describe it? You know, she's um, she's stern. She she's no nonsense. She, you know, she got where she is not by being particularly kind or lovable or anything like that you know i mean sure she, her her the pocken do not much care for her being a part of this organization mm -hmm. and you know she didn't she didn't care like she's like i i don't care i i want i want this power so like she is interested in advancing herself and but she's also interested in enforcing the rules and mm. you know she's stern She's um, a little bit sour, mm -hmm. um, but she isn't. She isn't um, a fly off the handle sort of person. She's not given to extreme emotion or swings of emotion. She tends to keep herself under control, yeah, and respond thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what happens. I think. <laughs> Um, so one, I think I, I really like this dynamic of, uh, of her being a pockin and that, uh, that, that is a thing that other, that other pockin really don't like. And that I, I feel like it makes sense to me that she has this kind of like almost bitterness towards other pockin, um, kind of a thing. So Chip I, on her shoulder a little bit. yeah, I, I also kind of imagine her, um, in the way she presents herself, uh, that like maybe she's got her her quills like trimmed like pretty short or something like that, like almost as if she's trying to uh, 
like Be- become less pocket become less pocket yeah exactly um i don't know if it, if that jives with with the way you're thinking of her um uh sure i was i was going to say that she firmly believes in her rightness um mm. and so that doesn't quite jive with that okay. but um but at the same time i'm i'm not sure that it's necessarily opposed she's she just doesn't want to she doesn't she certainly doesn't want to accentuate her pockiness. Mm-hmm. So I think it, I think it works. A, okay. A sultry song would not work on her. <laughs> so I think so. You open the door and you sort of land on the other side of this door, and she looks at you. I think she's uh, she's kind of like you catch her in the act of sort of pacing around her room. Uh, she's got a book in one hand and a glass of wine in the other, um, and this room is is sort of like lowly lit um f- for what you've seen in this uh this manner it's it's like s- more on the plush side um and uh she's she stands there and she's sort of like uh barely looks up from her her or you know looks up from her book and uh <laughs> and says something like and what are you doing here um, and, uh, Issel, what are you doing on the other side of this room as she turns away from you? All right. As she turns away from me, I reach out and I very gently press the, the, the handle, you know, the, <laughs> it's, it's double doors, double window doors, like French doors. Sure. And, uh, th- they have, um, the, the lever style handle, okay. you know, um, the scroll work lever sort of thing. So I just reach out and I very quietly press it just to see if it's unlocked or not and i discover that it is um or do i need a roll for this let's do i'll do a let's i'll do a fortune roll do it um i'll do two again that's a six it is unlocked all right uh so, so she, she she's sorry, turned yeah. away from me. Yeah, that's what I was and, just gonna yep. clarify. Facing Shayla. Mm-hmm. Uh where is she in the room relative to the door? Um like middle middle of the room ish. Middle of the room. All right. Uh and I think she's she's slowly pacing her way towards Shayla. With a stern look in her eyes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Snap decision. Snap decision. Um... You can do it. What would Batman do? <laughs> how, 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 how far is it to... Hmm. Just do it. Drive it like you stole it. Yeah. I pick up... I pick up the... Um, a vase... Okay. And I toss it off the far side of the. I, I I lob it over and off the far side of the balcony, and then I dangle off the near side of the balcony on the outside. Okay. So so I've I've made this pot clip the edge and fall to the ground and shatter making a noise outside but i'm hanging away from okay so if if i'm looking out the door you've thrown this pot off the right side of the balcony and you're hanging off the left correct okay and and you said that this is this is a wall around this balcony yeah i cannot be seen on the far side of it correct i'm just hanging from it Mm, using those established details Uh. (laughs) yes um okay what is uh what is your intention here My intention is to get her. My intention is to get her uh, distracted and more in- more interested in um, a potential burglary of her room than in this, you know, this nobody who just happened to wander in. <laughs> you know, she, she just, you know, she's clearly drunk. She can smell it, the alcohol on her. And... Established fact. <laughs> 
you know, mm-hmm. and you know, clearly she just went through the wrong the wrong door. Like she would give her hell if if she had the time, but there's more important things going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, so what are uh, what are you rolling? Uh, this is um, this is finesse for the lob of okay. the of the vase. And it's prowl for the dangle off the edge. I think. I think it's two rolls. What do you do? You think it should be only one? Um. Yeah. I think it should be only one. Um. All right. Then, let's call it finesse. Okay. I think that's that's fair. Um. Especially given our our shoe conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think. Yeah. Because. I think also the the getting that uh, uh, the the hit and the noise of that just right seems like the more like important mm-hmm. part of this. Yeah. Like you can hang off a railing and like, sure. that's that's not, that's a, big not a big deal. Um, great. So um, this is going to be uh, desperate limited. Desperate thing so can i can i just ask real quick did i did i see isil um it, if we would like to establish that uh we can do that um well, so I did, he, you did see my hand protrude off the side of the, <laughs> of, the of the window door and like jiggle the the latch mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay. now that we're in the same room if someone would like to if uh we could either uh, call this a uh, a setup action for something that Chayla is about to do, or um, I, I I I kind of see it that way. Mm-hmm. So my 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 hope is that we can get uh, Kirik in a position where we can incapacitate her, or at mm-hmm. least completely confuse her, and maybe get her out of the room. Yeah. So I, I don't know that this is going to accomplish it on its own. Perhaps I am setting up something yeah, else. Yeah, I think that sounds... Let's see what happens. I think that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so to, uh, to... This remains Desperate Limited? Remains Desperate Limited. So this would give you... Um, where did that go? Oh, uh, set up. Set up another character. Uh, if you achieve it, any team member who follows up gets plus one effect or improved position. Okay. So... Um, I'm just going to roll it as it is. All right. Woo! And I have success. And you marked that uh, XP? I did. Okay. Um, so, uh, Chayla, let's get your follow-up before we sort of narrate yeah. this whole thing here. So, uh, what, did, what did you say as far as setting up action? Something? Yeah, So, so normally working against... Uh, particularly against a a major here of the unsheathed. Um, mm-hmm. you're you're going up against a a particularly high faction level. Um, right. so that's why most of your actions here are limited. So mm-hmm. if um if we take that setup, uh, we could give you um it say we were starting, say we were we were starting with a baseline of desperate limited. Mm-hmm. Um, that setup could either pull you to uh, risky limited or to desperate standard. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's either improving. <laughs> it's so it's either improving uh, your effect, so going from limited to standard. Okay. Or improving your position, going from desperate to risky. And that's why is that happening? Because of because. Uh, uh, Issel succeeded on the setup action. Oh, okay. I, I have distracted her. Yes. I gotcha. So she she okay. distracted her and, give, given and given her you something an opening. else to think think about. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't really know what this would count as, but here's my here's my 
thought plan. Mm -hmm. Thought plan, plan, whatever. So, Chayla just barely sees a hand reaching through the door, hears the crash, suspects that this would be Issel's doing mm -hmm. here. So I'm going to take advantage of this of the split second, possibly, that Kirik is distracted from. As I'm standing in the doorway, right right next to the uh, the door is a is her uh, what do you, what do you call it? her bar? A nice setup with her wines and everything like mm -hmm. that. Conveniently, right there is a nice little nice little napkin of sorts. Okay. A quick pick that up. Um. Oh no, he might. This may not work. Hold on. Oh wait, I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have it though. Uh. Uh. Here's what I'll say. Um. Hold on, I'm thinking how this works. I'm 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 trying to give you the opportunity to do what I think you're doing with a flashback. Okay. Um cuz you're going you're going for the file of slumber essence, is that right? Yes. 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 Um <laughs> I'm trying to think if we could if we could uh could 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 we maybe also say so I was I was going with the uh go to sleep now method. Uh-huh. However, could could we say that maybe after I did my kind of survey, if you will, mm -hmm. and kind of found which uh wing everything was going to, I, I you know, kind of noted servants coming and going multiple times with wine glasses and mm -hmm. growlers of wine whatever you call them so maybe a little a little sleight of hand as far as i guess that wouldn't work because she's been drinking the wine mm -hmm. i was gonna say maybe throw throw in some slumber essence in there but maybe it hit at that time conveniently yeah i i mean we could do that i'm just trying to figure out a way because if if Issel would have had your uh would have picked your slumber essence off of you. Yes, he would have. Yeah. Uh okay. how can we get that back to you? If Issel was just out in the garden up yeah. through the bedroom and then across the roof. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was like, well, he knew I was going to be in the green room, but he wasn't really in the yeah, house. So while I was up on the roof. <laughs> mm -hmm, let's hear it. I'm here for uh, it. So, it. So in, in, in my previous canvassing of, <laughs> of the area, I did also? note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, during my previous canvassing of the area, I did note um, through the windows, the various rooms of different colors you know mm -hmm. it's like oh look through those windows there and you know there's the green room and through those windows there is the is the blue room and all that sort of stuff so i know the general layout of the, that first floor okay uh and while i was up on the roof i see you know a series of chimneys <laughs> from the various <laughs> fireplaces okay um and and i'm pretty good you know, I, I've been doing this a long time. I'm pretty good <laughs> at knowing which chimney is like going where. So I picked the chimney for the hearth in the green room, um, which hadn't been lit yet. Oh, I love this so much. Mm. And I drop her materials down. Um, and you know that's where she had set up after she moved mm -hmm. the, the crate, yep. the crate off to the side. I of the was room. actually grabbing it out. I noticed it was there, and while I was talking to uh, my barbless lover here yep. and that's why i asked him to move the box to uh divert his attention so that i can grab <laughs> the items out of the, uh, the chimney that i saw come down. oh i love this <laughs> so much <laughs> um okay beautiful flashback well, that's a oh. great um well, i'm not played. sure if you're technically supposed to do flashbacks for like you know earlier in the score but earlier. <laughs> it's fine well we um, made it we made it that way I'm so here for it. Who's going to argue with that flashback? Not me. 
Um, <laughs> let me just check about stress. Uh, where was that? Um, oh no. <laughs> it was here somewhere. No, that's that. Um, I need to put down my headset for just a second while okay. I open a window. Do that just, as I... It's just getting so warm in here, you know? <sighs> so, I don't... The stress. <coughs> oh, I don't know what it is. Um, I'm pretty sure it was... Zero stress if it's like totally plausible one if it was if it was like a little bit of a stretch a little bit of a stretch well uh, clearly and we've determined and that it's very plausible i oh there we go flashbacks is your stress an ordinary action for which you had easy opportunity one stress a complex action or unlikely opportunity I'd say that's a zero stress. I, th I think personally, personally, I, th I think that I think it is. I think yeah. you're right. <laughs> Look, how, do you did you hear how detailed that flashback was? It was and the callbacks. Come it on. was beautiful. Come on. Um. Yeah. All right. This is a zero stress. <laughs> this is a zero yeah. stress flashback. Uh, you so mark that slumber essence. Uh, which which doesn't cost a a load. It is it is um, uh, italicized. Oh, so that okay. doesn't cost a load. Doesn't count. All right. Well, so then, uh, since I had that on my persons, I quit. Grab that napkin. That's right there. Mm -hmm. Put a nice liberal application of that slumber essence to that, and just before she able, she turned right back around to me, slap that over her mouth. Oh, so, so good. All right. What kind of role is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if my microphone is picking up my applause, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, would that be a, fi that's got to be a finesse. Get the camera angles on that quick napkin mm. grab. The Ooh, yeah. nice little flip of the vial open. Totally. Coming together and just a little finesse to go slap it around her face. I buy that. All right. Uh, so here's the. Uh, so, uh, let's do, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so let's do this, um, so you, so you then need to decide whether you're doing, uh, desperate limited, no, sorry, desperate standard or risky limited. Um, and I think I would like to say that, um, what does, let me look at slumber essence real quick. Um, I think I would like to say if you do limited effect, uh, you'll need something else. Like it will take another step to take her down basically. Uh, a hammer. Got it. Um, so, so you can do risky with a limited and have to take another action, uh, one, either of you, or you can do desperate and take that standard. Dose of slumber essence sufficient to put someone to sleep for an hour. A whole hour. The victim's yeah. sleep isn't supernatural, but it is deep. They can be roused with some effort. All right. So what's the play so, here? Was desperate limited or risky standard? Uh, other way around. Desperate standard oh. or risky limited. And the desperate standard, I would somewhat. We would need to do something else. No, the no, the, the, no, the, the desperate other way standard. Around. Yeah. The desperate standard. Oh, did, sorry. If you yes. Fail, yes. It's worse, but success is total. Whereas, Correct. 
the other way around um failure is less catastrophic but but we can't mm, fully succeed correct that is a good uh, way to put well, it well thank you for your input there then colin <laughs> um let's let's go with the the risky the risky limited yeah okay what did i say finesse mm-hmm Risky. Risky limited, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, good thing you didn't roll desperate then, I guess. <laughs> uh, things go badly. Okay. You suffer harm. A complication oh, occurs. God. You end up in a desperate position where you lose this opportunity. Um... Okay, so uh, so here's what happens. So you go for that. Um, you you try to uh, to get that that napkin over her nose and mouth. Um, uh, but uh, she she ends up being way quicker than you expect. Um, uh, let me just check one thing. Sorry, <laughs> I'm still getting the hang of this myself. Okay, um so uh as you're going to to do that she she uh the book just drops to the floor and she slaps the napkin out of your hand and smashes the wine glass in your face ouch um so you uh you, <laughs> uh you are going to take the level two harm uh uh, what should this be? Um, what does that mean? Honestly, oh, bleeding might be too generic. Um, facial wounds. Yeah, take take the level two harm. Uh, we'll just say it's slashed. Uh, so you'll what does that mean? if you look at your your harm boxes there, you have yeah. one, two, three. So yep. in one of your two boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, or level two boxes, just right, uh, slashed. Facial lacerations. <laughs> right. Um. So this is, um, a, and and so so you've got your your face is all slashed up. You're bloody. Um. It's not. Um. Uh, it's not a good look for a bard. It's not. It's um. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, Money maker. pretty yeah. serious, but, um, so anything, anything that basically is going to potentially involve, uh, you know, maybe like you being able to, to see or something like that, you're going to take mm -hmm. minus one D minus one okay. die because of, okay. because of that harm. Um, uh, yeah, so that happens. Um, and uh either either one of you yeah. um she um, so she she does that and she's now beginning she pulls out a um uh a small wicked looking knife um and is moving towards chela yeah so i've i've hopped back up and uh moved to the door and i've opened the door And I've pulled out my throwing knives. Ooh. Because um, this situation has gotten real. Mm. Don't mess and with Etsy. So I... Um, <laughs> once the door is open, I launch one of my throwing knives. I believe I get three. Uh, I mean, you... I seem to recall that. Sure. Go 
Yeah, I oh, mean... Under, underneath it says six small light blades. Oh. There so we go. I have six. Down, the drop down says underneath it. Okay. Um, so I, I launch one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, at her... At her neck, which is exposed because of her short quills. Mm. All right. Um, I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to start a... Uh, I'm gonna start a clock for for her from for Major Kirk. What is what is the clock for? So basically, uh, you need four ticks on that clock to have to have to deal with Major Kirk. A dispatch of her. Yeah. So whether it's, I mean, whether it's, you know. Incapacitating her, kill her, and killing her, or whatever. Okay. Um, so, uh, and just just for for reference sake, uh, so a limited will give you one tick on that clock. Uh, standard will give you two. Uh, great will give you three, and uh, yeah. All right. Um. So I think this is probably a finesse roll. Okay. Because I am dexterously throwing this knife. <laughs> um, uh, is there perhaps a bargain that I might consider? Um, yes, I can think of something... <laughs> Um, I'm trying to, cause what is, can pushing yourself, um, sorry, does pushing yourself give you your choice of Um, it's basically, I think, I think finesse is going to be, uh, a notch down on effect, um, because, uh, hunt is your attack with precision shooting from a distance. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm still okay with finesse, uh, like finesse is fine. I just think it's going to be a notch down. Um, but going from already limited, uh, would take you down to zero effect. Um, so I think you can push yourself, uh, to, I'm trying to see if you can push yourself to gain effect. I think sounds right. Oh no, that is just a bonus die. Um, yeah. I don't. I, I've. Oh well. I'll I, say. I've understood. I'll say I'll say this if you want to because I know it works like this in other systems. Um, so for this situation, if you would like to push yourself instead of taking an extra die, you can push yourself back up to limited effect. Okay. Um, for stress, that's not a bargain. That's just that's too stress. Yeah. I'll take it. All right. So this is a finesse roll. Uh. I'll give you I'll give you risky limited here because you're uh you're not the one in in immediate danger. <laughs> right. Oh. That is a 3. Now is not the time, guys. 
It would work out like this. Um, things go badly. You suffer harm. A complication occurs. You end up in a desperate position. You lose this opportunity. Um, yeah, I think the... the um I don't know, i'm trying to overcomplicate this and think of something more creative but <laughs> i think the answer is <laughs> she um you know she, she is a a highly trained military um person so i think she has enough like danger sense or whatever uh to hear hear the door open to hear the steps um and to to hear that uh just that bit of rhythm in the gate that tells her uh someone is preparing to throw something <laughs> right cuz you know you take you take steps differently when you're when you're lining up a throw kind of a thing especially from across a room um so so she's able to she ducks uh just out of the way um of your throwing knives um and throws hers right back at you um uh and it hits you um like in the just below your shoulder like in your chest shoulder area um, so take, uh, take the level two harm, um, pierced. Damned. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, she is, she is not to be trifled with. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Um, and I think from, uh, from outside, uh, you can start to hear the, uh, basically the signs that people are getting ready to, uh, it's, it's, it's nearly dusk. So basically our, our, our time's running out. You're, well, I mean, you still, like you have from. As far as like she, she, she should be leaving soon. Yes. I'm not sure what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one one of our objectives is to at least just stall her. Right? Well, your the biggest well, objective is to get the the the, the the root the plout yeah okay. plout <laughs> the plans the root. All right. Um. All right. But yeah, if you can also, we'll uh, we'll try. Detain her. We'll try. She dropped her book. Where did she drop it? Uh, over in the middle of the room. She dropped it right down on the floor. Towards yeah, over so. towards Chayla's end of the room. Okay. She was heading that direction. So I can. Uh, am I like fully slashed? Like, can I like at least see mostly out of one eye? Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll say I'll, I'm covering one side of my face with my hand to to stop the bleeding here. Mm -hmm. But I I. I we're gonna we're gonna see if I can if I can sway her at all. I go whoa 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 whoa. whoa. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm s got off to a rough start here. <laughs> you might have a questionable taste of wine, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, <laughs> listen. I tr I try the. I was told someone else was going to be in this room. Clearly, that is not the case. Let's just kind of even out here. <laughs> I'll go my way, you'll go your way, and as I'm trying to do this little this little dance with her, which she may or may not be falling for, mm -hmm. I try to move her a little bit away from that book because I heard it. <laughs> we know it was important, and you know, kind of quick did a glance around the room. There's kind of nothing else in the room as far as plans that she <clears> could have <throat> been studying. 
Okay. So I'm trying to move her away from the book. I have that nice little little talk of, oh, what are we what are we doing here? What okay. are we doing here? So that's gonna be a sway. Uh that sounds good to me. Uh this is going to be desperate limited. Um, would you like to push yourself or take a devil's bargain? Um, uh, this, uh, this does actually feel like me towards a, uh, setup action. True. Yes. Uh, does that sound, does that sound right? For for him? Yes. For, for For Issel to grab the book? Yeah. Issel. <laughs> you just yep. skin the input there. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm just holding my breath, waiting to find out what happens, and trying to figure out what the heck I can do with it. But... <laughs> I know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yep. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's do that. Do you wanna, do you wanna push yourself or, or, uh, opt for a potential devil's bargain here? Uh, yeah, let me, let me hear a bargain. Um, okay. I guess that means I need to think of something. Um, (laughs) all right. So to make this a little more serious, um, this is going to be, uh, one. Cause since you're trying to make her notice you, Mm Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to be one heat as well as a negative one to the unsheathed. So you can either... What are we at with unsheathed as far as... Uh, currently you are at, uh, zero. Okay. Um, and you are at two heat. Um, so you can either take that bargain for an extra die, uh, or, uh, or you can push yourself. Um, and I'll say this is, uh, I think I'm doing this right. I'll say that this is not affected by your negative one die from the slashed. Okay. If you were trying to like cease see something or something yeah, like that no, that's yeah, but gotcha. here you're okay. you're just talking I'm just talking your brain still yeah. works yeah mostly um, i think i think i'm just gonna i'm gonna push myself okay so I'll take that two stress take the day sway what did you say this was desperate limited desperate limited extra dice Oh, thank There's God. that six. Um, okay. Uh, Isla, you want to give us this follow-up? Sure. Um, so, I, th- there was an attempt to move her in this? Yes. Yeah, that was, the, book, that yes. was the, 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 the point of this, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, at this point, I'm seeing our mission crumbling around us. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I dash forward um i plant my quills in the floor of one arm and like use that to swing around as a <laughs> as a pivot point ooh yeah and i i reach out my 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 tail is prehensile correct um i think it's the Tails? the barblish oh. trunks oh, that's okay. prehensile but i mean okay. Um, it could be well, a cool with trick some, with some <laughs> limb or other. I grab the book uh-huh. and I reverse my momentum so that I am flying back towards the door. Okay. And I just run and I leap off and attempt to tumble, you know, like a, a rolling landing. And then I am just going to book it. <laughs> Literally. Ha! Yep. Book. book it with a book. Book it, book it. Book it, book it. Book it. Book it. Um, all right. Well, that's a, that's that's a rather complicated action, so maybe I can't take all of that right now. But uh, I would like to. <laughs> uh, what is that? What is that? Uh, 
action. Uh, this sounds like finesse to me, unfortunately. I wish it were Prowl, but it sounds like finesse. Uh, I could s I could see a oh, that's tr case Prowl for Prowls. Is... Traverse obstacles, climb, swim, run, jump, run, tumble. Run, jump, and tumble. Yeah. Okay. You described all of those things, I think. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, so it's a Prowl. Okay. So this is a Prowl. Uh, this is, again, either uh, desperate standard or uh risky limited gosh <laughs> oh because of the setup right because right. of the setup yep um uh i i think it's uh desperate standard i think that i think that is is more honest yeah. as well yeah um and i'll i'll uh, give you that same devil's bargain the heat and one heat uh, and negative one with the unsheathed. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, I think we can. Um, so that's an extra die. Uh, you will. Uh, you will take the minus one die from your pierced here. Right. Okay. So, so I will remain at three. Uh, da, 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 where are you? The unsheathed. All right. You're on the board with the authorities. Let's right. let's see it. Oh boy! Desperate. <laughs> Big number. Standard. Numbers. Zero bonuses because plus one minus one. Yeah. Submit. Hey! Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God. Um. um so, sorry, Shayla. You may be uh, dead. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know. Uh, I'll uh, take yeah. for the team. So I, I desperately wanted to try and save you, but at this Listen point. <laughs> I told you I'd take an arrow to the knee for you, so. Yeah, and I told you I'd let you. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. Um, okay. Here we are. <laughs> Great. So, Isil is out. Uh, Chela. Um, she, she turns to look at that grabbed book, um, and is clearly making the connection that you two are, are linked here. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, does she have another knife? Sure, she's probably got another knife on her, right? Probably. Um, uh, oh, wait, no, I've got a better idea. Um, not all of her quills are cut super short. Oh. There's a couple, like, on the back of her arm, or like her elbow or something, uh, that are cut in a way that sharpens them i'm never gonna perform ever again <laughs> um and she comes and puts uh and puts basically puts those quills up to your throat um cool, cool. uh and what is she, what does she what gosh what does she want out of you Um, I, I don't think she says anything yet, um, but you see her sort of like, uh, look up out towards one of the windows to register like the noise of people getting ready. Um, I probably should have said there was probably a, an enormous like tree out in the front garden or something, mm -hmm. uh, for the festival, um, or for, yeah, for the vigil in the festival. Um, and she hears, you know. The, the noises of people getting ready to burn the leaves off uh, like they do at dusk um, come from out the window and she she looks up uh, toward that um, and I'll, I'll give you like one opportunity to 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 try something here <laughs> honestly just just cue the music if I lay here <laughs> if I just lay here <laughs> um, okay she looks up for for a hot second um I feel like we keep pulling out finesse, but it's like 
<laughs> Neither one of us. <laughs> I, I mean, hey. Knows what finesse is. <laughs> We've used but it a few times. It's true. We've used it a few times to, the, get, well, to effect. I don't know about good effect, but... <laughs> <sighs> Wait, did I did I take that? Um, just trying to look for for options here for you. So I will, I will bring to your attention, uh, the, uh, concealed palm pistol. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my only option that I got here. So the book or says, that, I can, that the, I can think of. The book says a small firearm with a weak charge, easily concealed in a sleeve or waistcoat. This pistol has extremely limited range and only a few feet. It's very difficult to detect on your person, even if you're searched. So that gets past your search. Um, and it's it's not a load either, um, since it's talisized. But uh, that's maybe a potential. Um, yep. I mean, it depends. It depends what you're trying to to do here. So. You said she's got like the quills on her arms. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, she kind of like pinned me against the wall with that. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of like the, the thought here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like up, up against like a corner, like over by that bar or whatever. Okay. You're like sort of slumped there. Your face is bleeding um, and whatever. And she's just got her, like basically her elbow, like up to your throat. Kind of half, half crouched here. <clears throat> The tails oh. of her uniform duster splayed out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I do keep this palm pistol with me. I don't like using it. But mm. when, when height situations call for uh, extreme measures, it, it gotta use it, so... I still have my, my one hand covering my face trying to... Try, trying to... To stop that bleeding as much as I can, or my face, mostly dried now though. You know, <laughs> the the face bleeds a lot. It looks a lot worse than it actually is. <laughs> but while I'm doing that, I am I'm you know conveniently that's with my left hand. Conveniently, I am right-handed. So I do a a nice a nice finesse to get that palm pistol. To get out of my sleeve and I I kind of aim it where I can which is uh, kind of just just up into her arm kind of kind of in like her, her arm well I don't actually I don't even know what the anatomy of a, <laughs> of a Vulcan is <laughs> do they have like armpits yeah sure yeah is that is that kind of they're they're yeah they're they're Every, everything is, this, is here is, is does this imagery make mostly sense? mostly humanoid yeah like so an, I an upright porcupine with two tails yeah sure. yeah you know so so you just kind of I kind of point it where I can mm -hmm. cause I gotta I gotta get her off her uh, off me and then and, and and try to make for that door uh and that that's that's what I got great so try to finesse my way out of this one with my uh concealed palm mm -hmm. yeah I'm just like I think Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, because it's a palm pistol, I think I'm willing to hear finesse here. Um, cause it's, it's, cause hunt is from a distance. Uh, which is not, <laughs> not, which is not. Yeah. like maybe, maybe skirmish is the more proper one here. Uh, but I, I think this is, this is fine. Um, 
So so we'll go finesse. Uh, this is definitely desperate limited. Um, mark that palm pistol. Yes. When you say desperate limited. Desperate limited. Um, are you pushing yourself? Would you like a bargain? No, I'm seeing. I'm seeing where fate takes me. All today. right, all right. <laughs> Living dangerously. <laughs> That's a five. Okay, take it. Uh, you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer severe harm. A serious complication occurs. You have reduced effect. Um. Okay. Uh, so you get this sh this shot off, uh, like up into your armpit. Now, I don't, I don't know if, like, I don't know my thoughts on whether we're actually using like guns here or whether it's some mm -hmm. kind of you know, like quasi mini crossbow, yeah, yeah mini crossbow like or like a yeah. like a quasi magical oh, contraption or something. Like maybe you're just you're just shooting off some kind of like animantic thing. It's a, a pneumatic dart gun. <laughs> um, yeah, like if it's just some kind of like quick little animantic spell that you like mm. fire off here. It would be something I would do. So, um, which is I th I think we'll go with that. That's a, I think that's a more interesting image. Um, so there's this this little sort of small animantic flash and explosion like under her arm. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, I mean, I think I think this needs to follow the fiction here. <clears throat> um Do it. So Do you it. you you get her um and I mean, this would take one thing on her her clock there. Um but she also uh, gets me. is moved enough that she gets you. Um, you take the level three harm uh, slit <laughs> throat or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Is there a word for that? I mean, th throat laceration. Because yeah. she didn't like kill me, right? Uh, like, yeah. Dead. So I'm like mostly dead, but I'm not like dead, dead, right? Uh, he's only mostly dead <laughs> or am i gonna like bleed out on my I way out happy so harm um i mean if it's level three harm yeah so level three is severe uh where is it impaired when you're impaired by harm to the top row, severe harm level 3, your character is incapacitated and can't do anything unless you have help from someone else or push oh. yourself to perform the action. I'm, I'm dead. So... Well, it sounds like you can push yourself to... So, maybe. yeah. So, she... She does that, and I, she leaves you for dead because she's gotta go. Okay. Um. So, take, so take that level 3 harm. Yep. And then... I think you can uh, push yourself to try and get yourself out of here. How do how do I do that? Like I. Okay. Um. The meanwhile, I am yeah, yeah, running. Running. Um, I am running to. Uh, Towards the meetings, the meeting place. Yep, the drop zone. Yep. Um, and I'm I'm scanning through the book to see, desperately hoping that, uh, in fact, I got information <laughs> that we wanted, and this isn't just like a a trashy novel, cheesy romance <laughs> novel. <laughs> um, so, d did I get the information? Uh, yes. Okay. So. We infiltrated. We got the plans. We did not detain her. Um, we got a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. So now I am handing off to the runner. Yep. Uh, that which I have. Yep. Um, 
I then... I haven't even bandaged my wound, so I'm still, you know, I still have this knife in my shoulder. <laughs> um, but I, I return in, an, in the hopes that I will be able to assist Chela out of the premises mm -hmm. in some way. So I return and I lurk around the perimeter yeah, here's with the view with the view of the balcony. Here's what I'll say. I, I think I'm content to uh, basically give you those two stress and call you good to get out because um, it's you know, you don't have as much quite as much uh, um, direct, you know, scrutiny on you right now. But we can we can sort of have a slight montage of, of that out of there. What here's here's an interesting character question. What what is um how what is what is Isil like on this run back to the manor to look for Chela? Uh what what do you mean by what is he like? Um are, are you looking for his his attitude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh he's pretty He's he's behaving stoically, but he's pretty um, he's shaken. Mm -hmm. He feels this was a dismal failure, um, but um, he's just hoping to salvage anything possible, um, you know, and feeling incredibly guilty that he got out and left her mm -hmm. in that situation. Um, but he's channeling that into uh, you can't stop to. Um, Don't think you about can't it. stop to bandage yourself. You like you're not going to leave. You are going to keep working until you know that all is lost or you've recovered your companion. Yeah. So I think when you when you get back, uh, you're you're just getting in the in the area when you see uh, Chela basically like flop off of that balcony. <laughs> um, that that she is, you know, push herself, uh, through having her th throat slashed, uh, enough to be able to, to crawl. Like there's, there's a blood smear, like all the way across that balcony. Um, but you've managed to, to heave yourself, uh, out and over that, that balcony. It's a bit of a rough landing, but you get out there. Um, and, uh, and Issel's there to to help you get out, and the two of you limp away. I mean, he's just dragging my ass out. <laughs> right. He can limp away. My ass can't drag out. Um, and we can even, for, for extra flavor, we can even say, like, if, if there was more than just that runner at the drop point or whatever that you maybe brought a person some, back some or help. something like that, yeah, yeah. to to get it um but you get out there's uh there's uh unsheathed kind of swirling about and and uh we get one shot of uh major kirik marching out the front um uh half a hand Bling. kind of under her <laughs> her arm or her armpit uh bleeding uh as she's just marching like focused um and goes to get in her little of course she has absolutely patrol boat no no problem knowing exactly what is going on here mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean yeah if our if that intel is still any good i'm i'd be shocked but i guess you know maybe they don't have time to change the route Meh, but they're, we'll they're, they're definitely going to be watching though. We'll we'll see what happens. Yep. <laughs> see what happens. Um, but you, yeah, you at least got the route. You got some info, um, and uh, that part of it was a success. Um, was it though? I mean, those were your main objectives: That's to get true. in, to get the plans, and to get out. <laughs> yep. And you mostly did all of that. <laughs> mostly did all of that. Um, so, uh, so we'll do 
true stuff when both missions are wrapped, I think. Uh, but for you, both of you, let's quick do a run through of uh, XP stuff at the end of session here. So if you go down to the mark XP, mm -hmm. um, so we'll go through each of these steps for everybody. Um, and you get to mark any of this XP in either uh, playbook advancement. Um, so there's a little row of ticks there. Mm -hmm. uh, for playbook advancement or in any one of your um, big things. Um, what is, what is big uh, sorry, in, insight, prowess, resolve. Oh. Wait, I, I, was, I did that as I... Wait, hold on. Um, I should have... I um, We should have also been thinking about resisting harm uh but you guys were also pretty full on stress so that could have gotten bad yeah it, it, so i took two stress at the end there that's what you wanted me to yes yeah okay yeah <laughs> for for pushing yourself to get out of that uh great so let's start with uh let's start with isil so you did your desperate actions um uh, oh and so so this xp can either go to playbook advancement or to any one of your uh uh three attributes so um, that so that is that is true. Like it, the way this one line reads to me is, the stuff below goes to playbook, and the you know desperate roles go to. Uh, thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this end of session stuff you can put wherever you want. Okay. Um, because the the stuff in session is the one that has to go to the. Okay. Um. So when you fill up a. Uh, attribute row, you get an extra tick in any one of the things in oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you fill up a uh, the playbook track, uh, you get to take another special ability. Um, I don't think though that I can take a third a third pip in anything yet. Correct? You can take uh, you can take anything up to three. The... Oh, I can take up to three without special training. Correct. The special training lets you get to up to four, I think it is. Because mm. okay. the, the, the limit to two was just for the very beginning. Okay. I, okay. <clears throat> um, no, we, have, we have this training for prowess, but we don't have mastery. Correct. Um, so the, what... the prowess training means that... Um, uh, one of the downtime actions you can take is to train. Okay. Um, and normally when you take that action, you would put one in whatever. Um, but with the prowess, uh, training, uh, you get to put two in prowess instead of just one if you train prowess. Okay. Well, then let's count up my thing. Let's count here. up. So you get one if you I did it once, and much. two if you did it a bunch of times. Yep, I addressed um, the challenge with stealth or evasion. I think I did that at least absolutely. twice. Absolutely, so we'll give you two for that. So I will take my last tick in prowess and take a third pip in f finesse. finesse. Um, and I'm going to put the other one in the playbook. Okay. Uh, you expressed your beliefs, drive, heritage, or background. I f feel like maybe that was only once. Um if if it indeed it counts at all, let's see. Um, express my beliefs, drives, heritage. Um, I'm open to hearing a pitch for for what you. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Expressed, like you you use them or like. Yeah, they they were they were represented in the way you played your character. So my background is as a burglar, and I did break and enter. Mm-hmm. Hent break and exit as well. Um, <laughs> so I would count that as one. Yeah, um, I think that's fair. The the only other thing is, you know, particularly playing my character with Joa, but I don't know if that's expressing my beliefs and drives mm -hmm. or if it has to be in the course of action. I, th I think it's probably mostly talking about in the course of, of the action mm -hmm. of, of the score. I'm trying to think if I can come up with a, a good argument for a second one there. Um, I mean, my 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 desperate return 
to rescue my teammate, but I don't know that that particularly expresses anything unique about my character. If if anything, I feel like that kind of goes against some of your nature, which I think is really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, and I really like that. Yeah. That's why I was asking you what that what that felt mm-hmm. like for Issel on the way back. Yeah, yeah um, I, I agree. It is a little bit contrary to my character, but you know the emotions are so high. Yeah, which is All great. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at one. Okay. Click there. Um, I like, I'll, I'll say with that little character development, my favorite part about that is that you said that you felt guilty mm-hmm. that you got out, mm. and, and I did not. Like, I feel like that's that's a little that's a little turning point for Issel there. Like, that's <laughs> that was why the deviation from character. I felt like, yeah, me personally, as a, as a viewer of this, totally. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And then struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during the session. Uh, I mean, we didn't really explore those nope. yet, so so no. All right. So, Chayla. Uh, address a challenge with calculation or conspiracy. I don't know if that even... Oh, well, I think that you're uh, picking picking the song to play to your dude. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot, a lot of the choices I've made were calculation mm-hmm. if, it, if it's in that vein. Yeah, I mean, this this is kind of the one that's like supposed to give you all the XP, I think. Because <laughs> it's like, all of the XP. did you play your character like the character? <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, so with... So uh, yeah, so we'll give you two for that. Oh, it's two? Okay. Since Since you did it more than once. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay. I keep putting in resolve, so I'm up to four with resolve. Do that. Express beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Does it count of uh, me physically playing a song? Yeah. No, I th- I think the uh, the musician part of that is 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 great. Um, I'm trying to think if I can consider giving you two for that. Um, I mean, because I, I, I mean. What are your beliefs and your drives? I don't really know that about your character. You know, just, your, I mean, uh, a, a big part of it is um, music for music. So I, I, I was going to argue that uh, going to... Uh, What's that? Uh, what's it? What is that group? That Alex? oh, the Camerata. Yeah, it's probably kind of against my beliefs <laughs> <laughs> and drives, but that's more of like heritage and background. But um, you know, more more so that uh, art is art, and a lot of these the unsheathed and um, these current guys and and nobility, you know, think they know what art is, and they you know, are, uh, limit the freedom in that, but mm. you know, my family, since I grew up in the, uh, the traveling troop, you know, my, my family really instilled the, you know, there's, there's freedom in, in music and, you know, uh, what is the bohemian, the actual bohemian, um, freedom, freedom, truth, and love in, in art. That sounds music. right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's kind of like my, my core belief. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like, my core push back to some of these uh militant factions is that they're they're limiting the 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 truth and freedom that yeah. there is in the world. <clears throat> um, um so I don't yeah. I don't know I'd say maybe like one for Yeah, that. I think I think one is is probably uh good with that. And then uh vice or traumas uh I don't, no, I don't think really. so. We didn't. I didn't really explore that at all, as far as like, yeah. We we kind of need a downtime before that can take right, that right. Back. Well, there's because there's there's options for, uh, yeah, there's options for me or for you to sort of throw in like, hey, this is the this is the vice, mm-hmm. you know, this is my vice. Like maybe I got distracted by this thing during the oh, mission, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, so, well, you know, if it had been a trashy novel, 
That's <laughs> mm, true. <laughs> I don't know. But we it wasn't, been... so, you know. <laughs> there, so, you know, it could have been. Oh, gosh. All right. Although, I only had two desperate actions. I feel like I had more than that, but. Yeah, you, you. All right. You can. Desperate action. You can go look. Oh, can go you can go scroll up. Yeah, because there is, because it'll is say. It every, is it every desperate? Every desperate action, yeah. So you can go check three. Uh, so that wait. Um, All I had was two. So a finesse. You had a finesse desperate, a sway desperate. Oh yeah, the last. Another sway desperate. Well, no, because you got. What did you put your? I had, all I had was two, two. Um, resolve. Desperate. Two in resolve and one in prowess, right? Yeah. And you put your the three experience you just got in resolve. Yes. Yeah. So you had you had two in resolve and one in prowess for that last finesse desperate roll. So oh, okay. it was three total desperate rolls. Okay. So now that I have, sounds okay. right. I didn't have it in the prowess. Okay. okay. I'm just close. Great. Close. Um. Well, hey, that was really great. <laughs> it should be a movie or something. Um. Yeah. I am. I am very pleased with how that went. I hope you guys a drama. had a good time. <laughs> I did. Um. And I, I hope the one person still watching. <laughs> 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 oh, hey. Someone. Puff Daddy 0398. I don't know when you <laughs> sent that message, if it was like an hour ago, but hi. <laughs> I'm really good at watching my chat. <laughs> probably, probably, but anyway. You know. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for uh, for watching. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We'll have our uh, the thrilling conclusion <laughs> to yeah. tomorrow. tomorrow night. Uh, all right. Play us out, uh, thing. <laughs> Play us out, thing. <laughs>